My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Rahamanda Sabrahila Konda Rabahash. Selikabundra Paraski Falandra Maradadas. Rahimata Sapali Marata Sundarahas. Shalabanda Patu Paradiga Sadash. Rakabanda Patu Susuria Nala Amandahai. Selikabundra Paruskus Kabalina Has. Rakabanda Parasila. Parasila Parasila. Selubandra Patu Prahila Kabas. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Precious Father, we thank you for tonight. Even as we congregate under the auspices of your Spirit. We ask that by the economy of mercy, you will grant us capacity tonight, strength and access into the realms of mysteries, the realms of insight, where men are strengthened beyond their weak and feeble limitations. Father, we ask that you grant us the kind of mercy that the children of Israel had that caused them by priesthood to legislate and to litigate against the forces that had them bound for 430 years and on the strength of that priesthood they walked through the belly of the Red Sea and they defied the powers of Leviathan walked on dry ground dead zones until they found their place in you a land that flows with milk and honey tonight Lord we ask that you will grant us access to walk in deep waters grant us the capacity to find the ancient paths where the patriarchs of old walked the places where they kept their feet and on the strength of that ground they altered even the powers of the constellation and made every force in creation to walk in their favor. Grant us such insight, such strength, such access tonight so that the weakest one among us will become a mighty nation. We ask that beyond the utterance, let there be a tangible communication of your spirit and your essence. That essence that will not deplete, even though all creation depends upon it for sustenance. Furnish us with it tonight, Lord. We give you all the glory. And we trust that that which you have in mind for this noble gathering will be achieved, even by the power of your spirit. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Wow, that was awesome. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, I would just have to, because of the little time, do a little definition of terms and then we'll do a little demonstration of what we'll be sharing.
so that men can be brought into the reality of what we talk about. The beauty of the gospel is not in the intelligent nature of its presentation. The beauty of the gospel is in the power that it communicates in order to make the receptors become what it talks about. The doctrine of righteousness will be a waste if all you know about it is the intelligibility of its creation of its design until it becomes an experience it is not a gospel the difference between a teacher, a preacher or a proclaimer and a lecturer is that the things we utter they are backed up by a government from another realm making those words potent in the lives of the hearers and they become that which is uttered Tonight, there's not so much that may be communicated in articulate speech. But the good news is that certain truths and certain realities, they are transferred, they are imparted as a body of spirits. So even if you don't understand what will be shared, the spirit will be imparted. And you will discover you will be changed into another man. I trust God tonight for a very tangible transformation in the lives of the hearers so that there will be a notable difference in your life from this day forward. Glory to God. I want to appreciate God's servant, a dear friend and a brother who has given us the privilege to be here even this evening to share the word of the Lord. Can you please celebrate Jesus for my brother Friday. <laughs> and now it's, it's such a great honor. He's a man that emits such a, a beautiful flavor of the Holy Spirit. And if you listen to him, you'll discover that we drink from the same fountain. Glory to God. I want to salute my brother and covenant friend and brother, covenant brother and friend rather, Victor, but who came with me this evening? He's been standing in for the past two days, and I'm sure you've been tremendously blessed. You see, there is not so much I can say tonight because he would have said virtually everything I want to say, except that the word of God is fresh. It's fresh every time it comes down. My sister, Sister Bumi, and her dear husband, Guntebi, are here with us. Wonderful ministration. Glory to God. And Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. Sister Vicky. You see, her ministry is going to typify most of the things I'll be saying tonight. And by the time I'm done talking, both of us will minister. Yes. You know, the last time I ministered here, not this exact location, the chants that were coming out of her spirit and the sounds she was creating. That was what I listened. I didn't listen to the message I preached. I actually collected my message and her worship session. It was her worship sessions that I played for more than six months. I kept hearing it and it kept transporting me. It kept transporting me. She's an amazing person. Can you celebrate the work of God? I know. See, the songs programmed my mindset. I keep, sometimes I just keep hearing them in my spirit. And then I, when I sing them, I try to sing them the way she sang them. But I don't have that energy and that flavor. You will, you will minister tonight again. She holds a key. Listen, there are many kinds of worship ministers. There are people also when they worship, they hear what they say. But what they do is that they quicken your spirit, man, and then the desire to come into the presence and worship is activated. So they are ministers of the presence. There are certain persons 
that beyond ministering the present, they hold keys. Keys to strategic places in the spirit. They are activators of encounters. They are activators of spiritual gifts. They are activators of possibilities in the spirit. So by the time you listen to them, you will discover that certain dimensions of God that you have not labored for, we begin to find expression in your life. She is such a minister that holds keys to mysteries, to dimensions, to realms of encounter. Yahweh, and we worship you for life. Those were her sound. From everlasting to everlasting, everlasting to everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. This is how we praise Him. You will hear it in the room, and the whole place is saturated. The power of God, the anointing of the Spirit, visions open, visions, visions. I say, what did God do to this lady? Celebrate Jesus. She's a wonderful person. Do you know why I'm taking time to, to appreciate her so much? Many dimensions of God that opened in my life in those seasons, she activated them. You don't understand the mystery of the ministry of the psalmist. She was the one ministering to me consistently in that season. She activated dimensions in my life, seasons in my life that would have taken months of prayers, months of fasting. She's a blessing to the body of Christ. I was telling of my last night, I said, every meeting I go for in Makodi now, she will go with me and minister. <laughs> have been traveling with her but she's a lady and many will not understand but I said every meeting I go I attend the Makodi I will personally let her know ahead of time and book the appointment this is a special minister of the gospel a special a special <laughs> you will not understand what I'm telling you some of us, we interpret energy in the spirit. We can interpret energy. When people are ministering, most times you can tell by the spirit the height where their voices are coming from and the kind of energy they emit. There are people you listen to, the desire for sin will die in your life because of the kind of energy they traffic, the kind of spirit they traffic. And as we share about sounds tonight, you will understand better. Spirits travel on vibrations. And one of the cardinal vibrations of spirit transport is sound. That is why the Holy Spirit came to the earth realm on the wings of sounds. He said there was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And the moment they were able to decode the sound that was coming from the heavens of God, the Holy Ghost began to alight. So the vehicle of transport upon which the Holy Ghost came was a sound. He said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, be not drunk with wine, daring in its excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. That means if you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, there are sounds that you activate and the more those sounds saturate you, the more the Holy Spirit saturates you because spirits, they travel on sound energy. Sound is a mystery. It's a mystery. Not many know it. That's why Jesus said, every idle word you speak, you will account for it. Some of the things you utter, they are the things that energize demons to walk in your life and in your world. 
most of the things you say carelessly they are the things that have kept you in bondage till now because those sounds they are conveyors of spirits celebrate God's servant Samson Otonu you know Samson Otonu is my very good friend he's my brother that man loves the kingdom he loves the Lord he has been given a special ministry to advance the strategic operation of God in a dispensation you see there are many people that have been given ministries but the job of others is to ensure that the ministries get to the ends of the earth everything Jesus was doing would have ended in Nazareth but there were people that were sponsoring it and even after he left they sponsored it those people are too important you can't over, over you can't over emphasize the quality of what they do in the body and somehow my friend happens to be one of the few that the Lord have chosen for this dispensation to advance the frontiers of the kingdom can you celebrate his service in the house of God I'm surprised to see my guys from the medical medical school Abba Benedict <laughs> can you imagine how did you guys come here <laughs> can you imagine Tehima is also here how did you get here see Dr. Comfort right? wow glory to God oh my God just lift your hands toward heaven we have 30 minutes to share the word of God glory to God you reign on high Adonai 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 You this title but honestly it's not a concept for babes there are certain teachings that are meant for people who are actively involved in spirit business because the economy of the operation do not lend themselves to babes when we begin to talk about matters of courts young believers may not understand when we begin to talk about things that have to do with sound, babes in Christ may not understand. And then when you talk about power, most people don't even know what it means. Most times we think it's about people falling down in meetings. We don't really know what power is meant for. There are matters of depth in the kingdom. There are businesses for people that have journeyed with God to a level we are commitment commitment of life devotion unto God have become the centerpiece of their lives people that God can make bold to commit kingdom responsibilities to because at this time they are trading by the economy of mysteries it's not a topic that you can handle in a gathering of bees I'll just try to explain the peripheries at least it will help you become more conscious cautious and careful because of necessity these are part and parcel of your life in your everyday operation 
What are sounds? If I begin to define it in terms of physics, that will be the lowest level of what it is. But as we began already, let me just begin by telling you that sounds are the conveyors of spirits, the carriers of spirits, the communicators of spirits. And you need to understand that this realm is not a realm of spirits. This is the realm of man. But man is not designed to operate and live for himself. Man was designed to traffic the dimensions of spirit beings so that his life can become a summation of the desires of spirits. The needs of spirits and the possibilities of spirits. You know when John went to heaven, he saw a lot of things. In fact, at a point he recorded that he saw a strong angel who was proclaiming with a loud voice. He said, who is worthy to open the book and to lose the seas thereof? No man was found worthy. He was reading the charter of heaven as it as touching the purposes of men that were living in the earth realm. And unfortunately, the extent to which that angel had access to what the degree of judgment. He had no access into the portals of salvation. The possibilities in Christ that provide for our salvation was not yet disclosed to that angel. For John to have understanding of what God wanted to do as touching the destiny, the eternal purpose of man, he needed to go higher in the spirit and receive counsels from people or from beings that are operating at higher levels. And that was when he met one of the elders. And the elder said unto him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed. If John had returned from heaven at that time, the message John would have bring to the, brought to the earth tribe was that man is doomed. Because from everything the angel said, salvation was not captured. The angel only gave a narrative of what happened from when man was created and up to the point where man was condemned. But there were people in heaven that had higher insight and secret because of their degree of proximity with God. And it is those same personalities that define the reason and the essence for creation. You need to understand that the level of the operation in the heavens is beyond the operation of any angelic beings. They are called the 20 and 4 elders. They are the only ones recorded in scriptures to sit on thrones around the throne of God. So on the strength of proximity and stature in heaven, everything they say is from the deepest level of mysteries. And what did they say? They said all things were created for thy pleasure. That was the summary of creation. It didn't need to be brought in a very bogus statement. The summary of your existence is that you were created for his pleasure. These were the beings that explained the very reason why God created us. So you are not created for yourself. You were created for his pleasure. And these beings that are custodians of secrets that brought us this revelation made us or indicted our existence. If you are created for his pleasure, it means you have no existence unless your life begins to give pleasure to him. And the only way you can give pleasure to him is to be able to host his dimensions and to communicate it to your world so that he dominates your world. And one of the ways by which his essence can be captured and transmitted is by sound. So that lets you know the degree of importance of the kinds of sounds and vibrations that come out of you. Because every time God, whose pleasure and desire is to dominate, to colonize, to subdue, and to conquer the earth, wants to have that reality, that desire of him, find expression, it will only flow through the gateway of sound. So sound is the only economy in heaven that makes it possible for the desire of God to find expression. Because first of all, sound transmits God. So what brings God into your world is sound. There will be no God in your life except you understand the kinds of sound that can traffic his dimension. 
Did you remember when you gave your heart to Christ? The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, because if you confess, you host it. And on the strength of that communication, Jesus becomes a part of your life because his realities and his dimension are transmitted by sounds. Most of us, everything we say are negative. You know, I'm trying to be basic because of the kind of audience I'm seeing. For those of you who are very spiritual, sorry. <laughs> you know, the greatest strength of the link is at the weakest spot. So we need to carry everybody along. Most of you, you are manipulated by demons because the kind of sound you release, they trap their possibilities. Nothing is working for me. I am sick. I am dying. Oh. I will die. Oh. I don't die. You don't know that you are trafficking spirits and their possibilities into your life and into your world. Most children cannot prosper today because these kind of sound codings that they have been coded with by their parents are conveyors of costs. See your big head. Good for nothing. Wasted child. Baboon. And then when the child grows, the parents begin to hope for something good to come out of the child. You have encoded that child with a negative energy. Conveyors. I don't know why nothing is working for me. I don't know why I can't prosper. Conveyors of spirits. He said, as he spake unto me, the spirit entered into me. As he spake. You know, most times we come from meeting and we say, God bless you. The, the people don't understand what we are doing. You see, the word blessing means to cause to prosper. To make the possibility of prosperity to work for you. So when we say God bless you, we are not just using church cliche. We know we are communicating a spirit that will make your life to begin to prosper. Even though all the circumstances around you are contrary. And when you grow in God, one thing you begin to do consciously is to speak words that carry the life, the essence and the energy of God. This is not positive theology. This is understanding of how the realms operate. My house is constantly saturated with angelic sounds. Angelic. I can create the atmosphere in my room without praying. I know the sound that can transmit the kind of dimensions and possibilities I want to see. When you talk negative, you can't live around me. I don't know how to talk it. I can't hear it. Jesus said, Take no thought, say, because when you say, you have created a possibility for the spirit from when that inspiration was born to be trafficked in your direction. I don't talk negative. I tell myself, I am a blessing to this world. I don't care what you think. I am a king. I say, if I come there, things must work in my favor. I don't know how to struggle. I don't know how. It doesn't matter. He said there will be no water in the valley. There is no water. It is obvious there is no water. He said, but it shall be filled. He said, although the fig tree might not blossom, the labor of the holy might fail. There will be no head in the storm. But I will say, the Lord is my helper. He will cause my feet walk in my high places. He will make my feet to be like hinds feet. That's a man of understanding because he knows that his utterances are conveyors of spirits. It's a business of spirits. <laughs> Some of you think it's by laying on of hands. Most of the hands that are laid on you, you diffuse them before you reach your house. You leave a meeting where prophecies were altered from the podium that you will prosper, you will go forward. The moment you go out of the meeting, you tell your brother, oh boy, nothing they walk on. The man of God plants you uproot. Most of you are uprooters of blessings. Nothing they walk on. Oh boy, this exam, I go fail, I go. I never read you. What about the possibilities of favor? What about the economy of mercy? 
What about the hand of God? What about the anointing of the Spirit? Everything that work in your favor, you don't know them. He said that the communication of your faith will become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. It's only the bad things you know, and those are the ones you talk. So you give demons license over your life. And that is why you can never be delivered. Because every time they break the chain, you circle yourself with seven more chains. Sounds, they are conveyors of spirits. It's a mystery that we may not fully understand, but the scriptures affirm it. The scriptures affirm it. And the Bible said in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, it said the things that were written for time, they were written for our learning so that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, it said the things that were written, they were written for our example unto whom the end of the age is come. The context of that scripture speaks about judgment. But as it is for judgment, so it is for blessings. The kind of spirit that works for you, they are contained and trafficked in sound. Why do you think when we come to minister, the atmosphere is charged? But if you want the people to be healed, you must declare healing in their direction. Because the spirit that makes for healing will travel in the direction of that utterance. If you don't alter it, they may go back. Even though the power was available, they will go back sick. The Bible said in Luke 5, 17, it said Jesus was ministering and the power of God was there to heal. So the energy may be there, but you direct it with your words. That's why you may stand worshiping God. You are lost in the spirit. But when we say, Lord, touch, you see people begin to fall. They were in the spirit but the energy of the spirit was not directed. It's the mystery of sound. Spirit, the trouble in sound. God knows this, and that is what God applies. I was teaching in Lafayette three weeks ago. I told them there are three cardinal things that govern the operation of the realm. The first is the office of the Christ. The Christ is first of all the conveyor of the Godhead so it is in Jesus that the fullness of the Godhead dwells so when we speak about the Christ we are making reference to God and everything he stands for and we are also talking about the administration of the purposes of God because that throne regulates every other thing our callings are regulated by that throne in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 8 it says who shall declare his generation so your calling as an apostle is because who shall declare his generation? Your calling as a music minister is because who shall declare his generation? The second thing are the mysteries of the kingdom, which sound is one of them. The third are the principles of the kingdom. God himself lives by this principle. If you study the book of Genesis chapter 1, Moses was the one giving us an oversight of everything that was happening. If not because Moses narrated it, you will never know there was darkness because you will never hear God call darkness. The Bible said the earth was full of darkness, chaos, and the Spirit of God was moving on the face of the deep. He was brooding and contemplating what he wanted to do. He never spoke. When he concluded what he wanted, the Bible said God spake. He said, let there be light. If you were the one, you would have called darkness 1,000 times before you caught light because you don't have understanding. God never mentioned the darkness. Let there be light. And he said the light was. He knows that his essence is transferred by sound. Most of us, if we take an assessment of our words now, we have already condemned our lives. That is why we preach the gospel, so that you will know the things that are to your advantage. Even when you fall into sin, the cure is not keep talking about the sin. The cure 
is to begin to find repentance and talk about the provisions that you have in righteousness. That's how God operates. It's a mystery in the kingdom. I'm taking it gradually so that even the least among us, we know how to apply it. Because it is the application that makes the difference. It is not the knowledge. God is not committed to what you know. He's committed to what you do with what you know. He said, I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performed the counsel of my messengers. You apply it in your life. Things may not seem to be working. You keep talking it. You keep saying it. Because every time you speak, you give expression to the energy and the life and the essence of spirits. And you don't need to be a big man of God. It is a principle for operation in this realm. It's a principle. Sound transmits spirits. Maybe somebody wants to say, I am blessed. I think somebody wants to say, I'm blessed. Maybe what you've never told yourself before, you can tell yourself in the next one minute. Come on. You know, most times, most times, some persons don't even know how to tell themselves good things. That's why most people are easily deceived. Because they don't tell themselves they are beautiful. So one foolish guy comes up and says, hey, baby, you are beautiful. And the lady loses her virginity. She has never really appreciated the fact that she's beautiful. So when somebody tells her she's surprised, she's shaking. Oh my God, thank you very much. Are you just being aware? Say, man, you look good. And the guy loses his comportment. You don't know how to tell yourself good things. That's why he muffles you when somebody tells you. Come on, tell yourself something for one minute. <laughs> you will be shocked that some people have not known what to tell themselves till now. Hi, dear Holy Spirit, help you to help us, help us, help us. Lord. Sounds are also transmitters of spirit possibilities. Sounds are transmitters of spirit based possibilities. God may have a great desire for you, it won't come to pass. I will show you. Two major things that sound transmit. Two major things. In Numbers chapter 6, from verse 23. Look at it. Maybe you should look at the scriptures. It will help. It will help you better. It will help you better. Look at Numbers chapter 6. Very quickly, verse 23. See what the Bible says. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron, unto his sons, saying on this wise, Ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them. Listen, God wanted to bless Israel. It was his desire to bless them. But there was no way that blessing was going to leave the realm of God to the realm of man. He had concluded in his heart to bless them. Why are they not just blessed? You say you want to bless them, then they are blessed. But blessing is just not, it's not just a feeling, it's not just a knowing. It's a tangible energy in the spirit. And it must be communicated, it must be imparted, and it must be received. Because blessings makes for possibilities in your favor. And the reason is because it is an energy. That is why if you are blessed, even if a demon wants to resist you, he can't. Because the demon, that energy opposes his own energy. When Balaam came to curse the children of Israel, what did he say? He said, they are blessed. He said, how can you curse that with God are blessed? It's an energy. The energy of a curse can't work against that energy. That energy is superior. How can you curse them? 
And he concluded, he said, God, their God is in their midst. That means that energy called a blessing is also a spirit-based reality. Because of the blessing, God was in their midst. God wanted to bless Israel. Do that be easy. Be blessed. He said, tell them these words. Tell them. Because if those sound vibrations are not released, those possibilities will not be transferred. He said, the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Why don't the face not shine? It's a mystery. What you say will determine what you will become. It doesn't just inform your conviction. It is an energy that makes you to become. The empowerment that is in the blessing is communicated by the sound that interprets it. Isaac was blessing Esau in the stead of Jacob. He said, I bless you with corn and with wine. He had no corn, he had no wine. But he spoke the words. Those words have the capacity to make everything that can make wine and corn in the hand of a man to come to him. These guys were masters of these things. They knew it like they knew their names. So they don't just talk. They don't talk. These men, they talk as custodians of the oracles of God. That is why I say when a man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. They are energy. They are spirits. He said that the face of God may shine upon you. That the contenance of God may be lifted above you. And he said something. When he finished the whole blessing, he said, please the name of the Lord upon their children. With words, they could place the seal of God on a man with words. Jacob stood up and said, Reuben, according to your ordination, you are supposed to be a symbol of strength and wisdom. He said, but today, because you are as unstable as water, you will not prosper. It didn't matter how he was designed. You see, some of you are intelligent and then you think it's about intelligence. So you pride yourself in your intelligence. And then when you finish getting all the certificates, everywhere you go looking for a job, you just receive your application and throw it in the trash can. Some of you are beautiful. You think it's about beauty. I went to preach somewhere. I saw a 38-year-old lady. This lady was like an Indian. What? How possible? How? I, I saw the lady. I liked her. How can a lady as beautiful as this not be married? Maybe when she was 22, she thought it was about beauty. So she spent all her time on the makeups. I heard there is one now they call, how do they call it? Is it comma? Or, hi. Bond. Is it bond? How do they call it? <laughs> bond. So they will bond, they will put the bond so that the foundation can be built on their face. You know, these things are built nowadays. Those days, ladies rub powder. Now they build powder. <laughs> because the layer, the layer of the powder will be as thick as one cm. So they will draw, they will draw a fresh eyelash. The, the face is casted like cake. 38 years. No man has said hello. How? Not even the ones that don't have the fear of God. At least all these guys that are looking for ladies everywhere. At least one should have seen her. Nobody have approached her. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's an energy. It's an energy. Did you not see Jesus came to Peter's mother-in-law and the Bible said he rebuked the fever. It was not a spirit that held her bound. It was an energy of a spirit. The same way, a spirit of course. If he imparts his energy on you, you will go with the cause. So when we bless, we transmit the energy of God. We transmit it. Sounds are too important 
you don't play with them. You don't talk because you feel like saying it. You don't talk like that. Every idle word you speak, you will account for it because the immortals, they know what you are doing. You may not be aware. Ignorance is not an excuse. He said in the days of ignorance, God overlooks, but now, but now, he commands. He doesn't advise, he commands all men to repent and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Bless them, bless them, bless them. These are possibilities that are in sound. Blessings are trafficked by utterances. Spirit-based realities are communicated by utterances. It's not necessarily when you fall. If you say you are blessed, you are blessed. You are blessed. He's on the part of his life. Until he came to a point when he broke the yoke of his shoulder. What the father spoke was actually a yoke. He said when you are tired of that yoke, you may break it. A curse that was released was a yoke. So that thing held him down all his life. He will struggle, he can't. Meanwhile, what went in his direction were words. Sounds. They are not things you play with. Sounds are conveyors of judgment. When God wants to judge you, he won't slap you. You know, most of the time, the reason we use our natural tools is because of our level of weakness. You are weak. That's why you need to slap somebody to make a statement. Kick somebody to make a statement. Spirits don't operate like that. They are superior in strength. If God wants to judge you, He will just pick the word. You are judged. And that is it. And then I asked him to Peter. He said, why have you allowed Satan to enter into your heart? The man dropped down and died. The wife came. Lied again. He said, ah. See the feet of them that carried your husband to bury there at the door. Instantly the woman went down and died. It's a mystery. It's communicated by sound. You don't know what words are. Everything fighting your life. The only way you can judge it is by your words. That is why you must guard your heart so that it is preserved as a pure fountain of God. He said, cut your heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. In Proverbs 4 verse 23. For how do those issues of life proceed from your heart? It's by your words. Most Christians talk anyhow they want. The moment they think it, they talk it. They think it, they talk it. And they don't know why their life has cut out. They can't go in one direction. They can never go in one direction. Jesus stood. And there was a sound from heaven. And the people say, ah, he thunder it. Thunder. That's where they are hearing from. You know, most of you, you hear from a lower energy level. That's why you don't know the implication of the things you say. Most of the things you say, you think you are just making, trying to make an articulate expression. You don't know that beyond what you are saying, there is something back in it that can cause havoc to your world. When Jesus was deciphering the sound, he said, now is the judgment of this world. So the judgment against Lucifer came as a packet of sound. Now is the prince of the cosmos cast out. And if I be lifted up, I will draw men to myself. Sound, they are deeper. Sound are activators of seasons and dispensations. Our sister picked the scripture from Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 1. He said when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the day had no significance except as there was sound from heaven. When the day came, what activated the dispensation of the Holy Spirit was a sound. When the day came, there was a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. He said, The Son of Man will return with the blast of the voice of the archangel. 
So the end of the age, which is another strategic dispensation, will be activated by another kind of sign. When God wants to bring you into new dispensations of his oppression in your life, if you are discerning, you will discover you begin to hear different kinds of sound. Some of the music you love, you won't like them again. You begin to desire fresh kinds of song. Because those sounds are transport mediums that we activate those portals for you to enter those dispensations. That's why most people that expose themselves to demonic sound, they never grow in God. You ask them, they say, is it the same? No, it's not the same. But you will be stunted all your life. You will never move forward. Because you don't know the damage that they cause to you. Apart from the fact that they traffic demons into your life, traffic energies from the demonic realm into your life, your heavens will be locked. Because when it opens, you will not be aware. Did you not know the Bible said, those who are in the bad places of the weak desert, he said they will not see good when it comes. They are activator. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm upon the holy mountain. For the day of the Lord cometh. That's why you see every man who goes far and does deep business with God is a man of sounds. They don't joke with it. They are men of sounds. They are men of sound because breaking news from heaven they come as sounds. They are men of sounds. Either you see them with strange kinds of music. Some are morning to night they are singing hymns. Morning to night. Some are singing praise songs. They must tell one way or the other. Sound will be part of their constitution. It's a mystery. And you must learn it so that you make the most out of it. Sound. Your seasons will only be activated by sounds. Your battles will be judged by sound. Your blessings will come by sounds. It's a mystery. How it happens, we don't know. But we know that it is so. The greatest, one of the greatest and most amazing judgment the world have ever seen was the judgment of Jericho. He said, gather seven priests. And let those seven priests have seven horns. Meanwhile, God told Joshua, He said, behold, I have given unto you Jericho. It's kings, it's mighty men. God has given it to him. How will he get it? It's by taking advantage of the technology of sound. Go around it seven days. The first six days, blow the trumpet once. On the seventh day, blow the trumpet seven times. The wall sank. How was that possible? You will think it's only the wall that sank. Something has happened. Everybody inside the wall of Jericho was weakened. The Bible said every man went and the person he saw he plundered him. So even babes who were not trained in the art of war they were killing people that day because the sound immobilized the enemy. It immobilized them. There are many altars fighting you. What you need is the right sound. It will immobilize the altar. It will immobilize the priest. And then you will come only to pick this voice. It's a mystery. But most times we don't know the things that are to our advantage. So the greatest enemy of your life is yourself. The greatest weakness of your life is your ignorance. Because you don't know the things that are to your advantage. Most of us, pursue men of God, we think it's about the oil. Most of these men, they are not big in themselves. It is the things they know and practice. You come to meet a man of God, it's the same God bless you that you will never tell yourself that he will tell you. The same God bless you, you will never tell yourself. That's what the man tells you. He has, he has developed his soul in eternal life until he believes in the efficacy of that word. You are sick, you come to him and say, Be healed. The same be healed, you will never tell yourself. Meanwhile, every one of us have the same Holy Spirit, every one of us have the same faith, every one of us have the same angelic cooperation. But the difference is that most of us are not developed. And the only way you develop your faith is to engage it. Sounds are creative. Sounds are creative. 
Is there anything you want to see happen in your life? Begin to talk it. You will be shocked. You will be shocked. I learned this one from the mightiest of men. People like Pastor Chris, they be as talking sessions. He will sit down with boxers and singlet and say, I'm anointed of the Holy Spirit. I heal the sick. I raise the dead. I command bones and they are mended. I'm the king. I'm the priest. He keeps talking. They are called talking sessions. When you talk, what you do is that you educate your mind differently. The reason you believe what you believe today is because you have heard it over time. You may be beautiful, but if they tell you you are ugly, you are ugly. After a long time, you will lose your confidence. And you may be very ugly, but because they keep telling you are beautiful. Have you seen some very ugly ladies do some things? The confidence they have. You see a lady as ugly as you can imagine. And then when she's comforting herself and doing her thing, it's as if the world is all about her. She doesn't care what you think. She has built confidence in her spirit. She has built confidence. Your mind is designed to process information. That's what your mind does. Your mind is designed to process information. Even if God begins to do something in your life, you will need to convince yourself that this thing is a dimension. If not, you'll be telling yourself, this thing will work, so this thing will work. Those of you who are preachers, you know now. You know that the power of God is there. When you want to pray for the sick, your mind still begins to troubleshoot. Are you sure this person will be healed? Oh God, I received this thing from the Lord. I know. Why are you now trying to troubleshoot when I'm going for action? The reason you are troubleshooting at that time is because you have not convinced yourself in the closet enough. You need to educate your mind. If not, the world will educate you. They have told you too many things and you have believed it. The only way you will unlearn is to tell yourself what God says about you. I stood in a meeting. The anointing became strong and my convictions began to speak. I didn't know what I was saying. But when I heard the thing, I was roaring like a lion. I said, I am a revivalist. I am an apostle. I have touched the powers of the age to come. I walk in the corridors of the immortals. I, it was coming. That is my conviction. I don't need anybody to persuade me. It took many years before many people began to call me apostle. Apostle. Now, Apostle Arume will see me the point and say, My apostle Europe. I knew I was before I met him. I didn't need conviction. But as a mark of humility, I was waiting for the day of ordination. But I knew. You see people every day asking you, say, Sir, what, what, what does God want me to do? What is my calling? And then you ask them, God has been dealing with them about souls. God has been dealing with them about praying for the sick. They know what God wants them to do. But they want to hear it from you again so that they will feel happy or confident. They just want to be happy so that they will say, Kai, that man of God to say, I'm a seer. Meanwhile, three prophets have told the person already, but he wants to hear it again. Why not lock the door and tell yourself, I'm a prophet? The nations will hear me, the nations will bow. I will challenge Satan, I will fight iniquity. My generation must submit to me. What if for a prophet who doesn't believe in you, sir? Some of those things they tell you, they just want to, I beg, leave me alone. Leave me. <laughs> Sounds, they are creators. God came, the only way he recreated the world was by words. The first time he created the world was by sound. He said, where were you when the sons of the morning sang into the foundations of the world? So he created the world by sound. He recreated the world by sound. And he will create the new Jerusalem by sound. Anything you want to see in your life, the power is on your tongue. That's why he said death and life. You don't tell yourself you will not see it. How many times will you see preachers tell you what you want to hear? How many times will you meet them? There are over 100 people troubling. If I go on Facebook now, you see messages. 70% of them is to tell them about what God wants them to do. I don't have their time. And it's not just about me. Imagine people who have 10 million followers. You think he has your time? The guy was walking from morning to night. He has preached in 12 meetings 
in, one, in seven days. He is looking for where he would put his head and sleep. And then you come and say, Sir, uh, I had a dream yesterday. He is not hearing you. If you ask him, What did I say? You'll be shocked that he didn't hear you. He is overwhelmed with bodies. What is troubling his heart is the nations. The nations. You who have been saved, you won't go and develop. Sometimes when you ask a man of God, you tell a man of God something. Try to find out in all humility. If what you said, he, don't, he didn't hear you. You want to create a life for yourself. Begin to proclaim it. He confirmed the words of his servant. He performed the counsel of his messengers. That's how God operates. Most of us have never spoken to ourselves. The only thing we remember are the insults and the causes that were laid in our lives. We can even remember the causes that they levered on us when we were 10 years old because we heard it over and over. It has formed our mindsets. The reason you see most children, they are not confident. You bring them before people and they are fidgeting. Say, take the microphone and talk. They begin to cry. There's no confidence built in their spirit. Words can destroy and they can create. That's why you begin to speak consciously to your life. It's a mystery. I began by telling you that they traffic spirits. They also traffic spirit-based possibility. It's not psyching yourself. It is saying what God says because in it is the power of God. The Bible said the gospel is the power of God. How is the gospel preached? When you meet somebody, do you think the gospel to the person? You utter it. For that power to be trafficked, you utter Sounds are creative objects. They are creative strategies in the spirit. And only men that takes advantage of them can utilize them. And lastly, on the possibility of sound, they are vehicles of transport. Sounds are vehicles of transport. You want to go to high places in the spirit, the shortcut is, is, is by sound. There's a place for prayer. I will talk to you about priesthood for three minutes before I stop. But brother, it's not all the time we need to pray. I had a busy day until 5.30 today before I came here. I needed my soul to be ventilated. If I want to speak in tongue, I will need to speak in tongue for at least two hours before I can preach in a meeting. For my tongue to be anointed. For my soul to jack up to the realm of inspiration. I've been talking to you without paper. I talk from inspiration. Even if I plan a message, I can't follow it. For my soul to be jacked up, I need to speak in tongues for at least two hours before a meeting. If I don't, I will struggle under a closer. Because my soul needs to experientially sit with Christ in heavenly places. I have 15 minutes to come for this meeting. What will I do? I went and activated sound. 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 As the song was playing, the anointing began to flow from my head. And then I told him, well, I said, Kai, it don't open. I quickly carried something. I began to write. I began to write. The whole message downloaded in five minutes. It's a mystery of sound. It's a mystery. And the beauty of operating by inspiration is that it downloads into your spirit before you can teach it. So you have first-hand experience of the message. If I'm talking, if I come for a meeting, I know when the power of God will begin to move. Because as the, the way the message came, it was growing in my soul. When it exploded and I couldn't bear it anymore, if I'm talking in the auditorium, that's how it will be growing. If you read that point where it exploded in my heart, it will explode in the beauty. I am just recoiling what has already happened in the spirit. It's by sound. Never allow anything negative influence your life. Jesus said, take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Take no thought, say. Salavandash. Corabandra valiscos. Negronda fratiga sulavanda. Salavanda primos camara diastas. Sabalavanda duriasca. Paradisco. Capidas. Rapapandra paros.
share with you tonight is what the Bible calls priesthood. Priesthood is only possible by sound. You may not understand the significance of priesthood. This kingdom, this kingdom is meant for only one set of people. They are called priests. And those priests are expected to reign as kings. Listen, the kingdom is not meant for disciples. The kingdom is not meant for servants. The kingdom is not meant for friends. The kingdom is not meant for sons. The kingdom is meant for priests and kings. Everything Jesus does for us bring us to a level of sonship. That's the highest level the finished works of Jesus can take you to become a son. A son is entitled to inheritance. The Bible said the heir the heir, that's the son. But it is possible for the son that owns everything in the kingdom to be a babe. And the Bible said if the son is a babe, it's not different from a servant. And servants have no inheritance. The only way you can walk in this kingdom is to be a priest. The Bible said he has made us a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. The word royal is the word kingship. That means you rule in this kingdom by authority. We are the word of the king is there is power. Who can say unto him what to start? But for you to exercise authority, for you to have the experience of everything Jesus has paid for, is not to be a son, is to be a priest. Only priests have the experience of the kingdom. You don't know why you are still struggling with sin. There is no doubt you are a son, but you are struggling with sin because you are not a priest. The moment this two begins to find expression in your life, sin will collapse. You don't know why you are struggling with attacks. You are not struggling with attacks because you are a son. You are struggling with attacks because you are not a priest. The moment this two begins to rise, the experience of the possibilities of the kingdom begins to find expression. You want to touch God tangibly, it's my priesthood. The priesthood is like the tabernacle. You will travel from the gate where you see the finished works of Jesus. It takes you to the altar of sacrifice where your flesh dies. It takes you to the lava where you experience the government and the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. It takes you to the inner court where you see the altar of shoe bread, where the word of God begins to strengthen your spirit. It takes you to the menorah where you see the seven lampstand that light things and illuminate your spirit. It takes you to the altar of incense where intercession breaks out of you. But until you leave the altar of incense, you can't enter the Holy of Holy. The Holy of Holy is the place of experience. Many don't have experience because they stop at the gate. They receive Jesus and everything is did for them. But they never travel in the gates of this truth. So they never have experience. You talk about power, they have never experienced it. You talk about holiness, they have never experienced it. You talk about wisdom, they have never experienced it. Prosperity, they have never experienced it. That is why for them, the kingdom is a set of rules. That rules that they practice and they can't fulfill. That's what the Israelites suffer. They thought it was a rule, but God was talking about relationship. He was talking about experience. He was talking about oneness. He said in Exodus 19 verse 4, he said, remember how I carried you my wings unto myself. Unto myself. Experience is born by priesthood. And there's only one way to legislate the economy of priesthood by prayer. And prayer is possible by sound. So sound carries you to the presence. Sound carries you to the present. And until you go to the present, you can't fight the darkness in your family. You can wake up in the night and draw the whole past and will not move because you have not entered the presence. You can judge and legislate with words that will not move. You have not entered the presence. The reason most of us are walking like dead men is because there is no priesthood. And priesthood is possible by the right kind of sound. It's called the sound of prayer.
I command the heavens over them to open in the name of Jesus. La Coparasca. Begin to speak in tongues now. La Panda Zuzia. Le Copale Sudash. Le Papas Capas. Zebe Panda Tias. Rabos. Seligapo. Rabamanas. Maleka Zuzia. Palatias. Shapoata. Let the spirit oh, grab up. Let the gates open. And it's See the spirit. In the Let your ears open. Let your eyes open. Oh, God, this I command you. Oh, Come into a castle. Oh, <laughs> 
Those of you on this road, stretch your hands towards me. Zapapara Tias. One like a parina. After the count of three, the Holy Ghost rests upon me. Holy Ghost one. Holy Ghost two. Holy Ghost three. Touch. 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 Those of you here, stretch your hands. Holy Ghost. Touch. Holy Ghost, touch! Holy Ghost, touch! Holy Ghost, touch! Say the body of Holy Ghost, there's a few years of time. Holy Ghost, touch! Of you are about to receive a fresh baptism. 
a fresh baptism. Don't be distracted. Lift your hands toward heaven. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, fill them afresh. Fill them afresh. Hey, just be calm for a minute. Be calm for a moment. Be calm. Be quiet for a minute. Hey. Kingdoms have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. Mantles have been given to the church once again. For the kings to be born, for the mantles to be born. in my direction. There are certain things we inherited. There are certain things we inherited. Uh, we'll do this one without sound. We'll do this one without sound. This one is for people that can catch it. For those who can lambano. It's not for everybody. There are things we inherited from God I want to give you. Some of us traveled many miles. We went through many heights in order to receive them. Oh my God. Lord, let the rivers flow. As many as can receive now. I open it. Let them access it, Lord. Let them access it, Lord. Take. 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 Take, drink of the waters. Ushers, be sensitive. I don't want people injured. Take, let the rivers flow into your vessel. Such as you desire, such as I have received of the fathers, I make available to you. Receive in the name of Jesus. Let it cover you like a canopy. Most of you be drenched in it. Be drowned in it. Let it flow like a river. Flow like a river. Flow like a river. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Authority in the spirit. Access to mysteries. Access to insight. Let the vault of revelation open to you. The gate of insight. I ask you to open. The gate of insight. Open. Open, open, open. Receive the patriarchal mantles that we received of the fathers. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. Open to you. What we have with God that doesn't make any ground hard, we enter, we scatter it. Let it fall upon somebody now. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. A mantle of power. It falls on somebody. He falls, he falls, he falls. Jesus, I see somebody entering into a well of inspiration. A well, a well, a well flooded with inspiration. Flooded with inspiration. Take it. Jacaboria, Senatali, Zozula, Kabila, Paraskatar. Receive, receive, receive. Drink, drink, drink. It's a river, it flows, it flows. There's a river that makes glad the city of God. It flows. It flows. 
It flows. It flows. Oh, my Lata, I hear my spirit. Somebody is just partnering with an angel. An angel. A prophetic intercessor. A prophetic intercessor. Zatakabilas. Rapapash. 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 Zetokabilas. Zonto Patakiva. Lakuria Tatash. Oh, help them, ushers. Jegapaligapash. Blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with you. Blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with you. Anything you want. Anything you want. Anything you want. 
of God came upon Elijah and he outran the chariots of Ahab. It's a mystery of speed in the kingdom. I declare that under this auction, may the hand of God make for speed in your life. In the name of Jesus. Go and run ahead of your pairs. Overtake horses, overtake chariots. It doesn't matter the years that the caterpillar worm have eaten. The years that the canker worm have eaten. The years that the palmer worms have eaten. All the wasted years of your life. By the mystery of the anointing. I bring them back into your life. In the name of Jesus. He 
say Tali and his friends, they were ten times better than their peers because of an excellent spirit that was at work in them. I declare right now, in every endeavor of your life, let there be the working of an excellent spirit in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive the spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. Every mystery that we receive in Christ that is designed for our advantage, that is dormant in your life, I provoke it tonight. I demand, let there be an activation in the name of Jesus. Those of you that your beginning have been small, from this day forward, I declare enlargement over your life in the name of Jesus. Everyone that has been restrained by family altars, ancestral patterns, curses, and obstructions from their ancestry, at this point, I declare by the authority of the anointing that let all those chains, let all those utterances, let all those energies be nullified in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper. Go and subdue. Increase on every side. Rule in your world. Reign as kings forever. In the name of Jesus. And for everyone that have served in the course of this meeting, I declare that the Lord honor you. May the grace for honor come upon your life. Because you have served in the house of God. Men will serve you. In the name of Jesus. You will never be small. Everywhere you go to that you need favor to speak for you. I command the voice of favor to begin to minister on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. I declare that you are never small. You shall be ten times better than all your peers. In Jesus name. Thank you Father. Thank you Lord. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Somebody shout glory. Glory to God. Let's lift your hands and worship the Lord in the next five minutes. And whisper something to Jesus very quickly. Talk to him. Open up your heart to receive from the Lord. It's always my emphasis that um, God does not function in the physical universe outside of the laws of the spirit. He instituted the laws of the spirit in order to govern the physical universe and establish order within the realms. So himself is subject to the laws. Not because it violates his, his supremacy or sovereignty, but it's in order to establish order. And one of the laws that govern the protocol of interaction with spirit realities is the law of expectation. So if you don't have an expectation, even in the presence of the Lord, you will have nothing. Judas lived with Jesus for three and a half years. He ended up to become the son of perdition. So it's not a function of the territory. It's not a function of the spiritual atmosphere. It's not a function of the entity that God is using to bless by time. It's a status and the condition of your heart to receive from the Lord that determines the degree to which you can be blessed. I tell people most of the times, it's not even a function of proximity. If it's about proximity, the wife of men of God will be the most anointed. But most times you discover it's not so. There's got to be an expectation in your heart. Definite expectation. Most people come pursuing the Lord and they don't have expectations. They just travel from far. And they assume because they've traveled very far, something will happen. If you've been on this road for a long time, you'll realize that God is not moved by your travel. We pursued the anointing. We traveled from place to place. We even touched people, but we didn't have expectation. So there was no channeling of the grace. There was no channeling of spiritual emphasis and possibilities. So go ahead and, and create an expectation in case you have none. A man of expectation will move very speedily on the path of spiritual progress. Very speedily. A lot don't understand how the realm works. They gather knowledge, they gather information, but they don't grow. 
because they don't understand the cardinal operation of the realm. He said the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Do you have an expectation? Lavrasco Brasevela Hastias. Veriska Branda Labrasco Rehila Mandra Zizas. Rakabara Celebrenda Brahida Scorianda Dash. Lefrido Sariganas. Marapta Igda Livra Dazandra Digos. Vrakatiza Zalindra Apradastis. Rakobra Skevilo Zarandra Paradiasta. Laklavilo Bradazina Zingza La Grasdire Salaborandre Gias. Rakobra Sendre Fa Aridis Akdarabanas. Rapapate Kelibaranda Zuzias. Ando Bradila Sombra Katatarira Haradash. O Rahaza Sivra Nata. Mante Paretos Capre Indaragados. Rakabandras Kevrenidas. Leto Pateridos. Sometimes what you need as an encounter is not to see an angel. It's just to have a paradigm shift in your mind. You may be speaking in tongues, but it will be a religious activity. You will be charged while speaking in tongues. But if there is a paradigm shift in the mind, everything you do will begin to produce a different order of results. Spirituality is a very delicate reality. Not many understand how it works. We all do the same thing, but we have different results. It's a function of the kind of understanding that we have. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Rakabondra Safilatras. Oh, Rahamat Aliyas Ilavandre Barask. Oh, Lekaz is Alivani. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Listen. There are certain things that you receive as impartation. They come to you as a body of spirits. And there are other things that the Lord expects you to activate through the protocol of understanding. And if understanding is not a functional part of your operation, those things may be present, but you will never see them expressed in your life. That's why sometimes you pray, you sense the anointing of God all over you. You generate a lot of power, but it doesn't translate to anything. Because it's one thing to be able to generate virtue. It's another thing to be able to administrate virtue. A lot of people know how to generate virtue, but they don't know how to administer virtue. This light, the moment the gene came on, this light sustained the potential of having the elect electrical system and the current flowing through the whole system. But you had to have the, elect the bulb fitting for light to be there. You had to have this microphone for sound to be created. So the problem oftentimes is not in the generation of power. It's not in the generation of virtue. The problem oftentimes is a function of a lack of understanding. So you generate virtue but you don't know how to administer it. And that was why Jesus did not bother to heal his disciples. He didn't do anything for them. Everything Jesus was doing for everybody, he did none for his disciples. The only thing he gave the disciples was understanding. The Bible said he breathed on them and opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures. And the moment understanding was furnished in their constitution, they began to do the same thing that Jesus was doing. It would have been pathetic for Jesus to heal them. It would have been pathetic for Jesus to give them graces for prosperity. Jesus gave them understanding. Every other thing works on the crucible of understanding. This morning we are going to pray that the Lord will open up your understanding for you to understand the scriptures. It's one thing to gather knowledge. It's another thing to understand truth. Because you may know a lot of things but you may not have understanding. Realities work in the economy of understanding. That you know does not mean you understand. Paul said something. He said, whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. It's an established fact in the spirit. But he said something. He said, behold, all things have passed away. You may know you are a new creation, but you may not be aware that all things have passed away. So you will still be a new creation and functioning by the economy of the fallen man. So you find yourself struggling with sin. You find yourself struggling with sicknesses. Not because you are not a new creation. The problem is, behold, the word is idol. Become aware. When understanding comes, a man becomes aware of who he is. He becomes aware of the spiritual possibilities that he carries. That's when a host of spiritual dimensions can give expression to spiritual realities. Can you pray this morning and ask the Lord to activate your understanding? 
this dimension is something that the Lord himself does in a man. It's not a function of information. It is the apocalypse of the spirit. God opens up the realms for you. It is the unveiling of realities. You may know about healing, but you may not walk in his experience because the understanding have not come. You may quote 50 healing scriptures and think because you are quoting it, you know it. It's when understanding comes that authority is granted. He said to Job, he said, speak now if you have understanding. God was making a statement that you don't have authority unless you have understanding. And you ask the Lord. So that this will not be another exercise of gathering information. This will not be another exercise that will form your, your spiritual lexicon and your spiritual credentials. I prayed in tongues for 50 hours in 3 months. It's rubbish. It doesn't mean anything. Unless you are able to host the possibilities of God and give expression to them. Most times we major in the minors. People brag how long they can pray. But they don't have answers to their prayers. It's a pity. If you pray for hours and your prayer does not produce answer, it's a pity. So we major in the minors. We brag how that we pray for 10 hours. But when you ask, what are the testimonies of our prayers? They are not there. The difference is understanding. We major in the minors. Can you ask the Lord to open your understanding this morning? Salavrondre paras. Zagdivalis karabandra bregadinis. Oras elivanos saribakta riindarganos. I pray that you have a paradigm shift this morning. That your priorities will be altered. You will not brag in scriptures, but you will brag in the knowledge of the holy. That through the scriptures, gateways will be opened to you to come to know the Lord. That you will not brag in how long you can pray in tongues. But you will come to a point where your prayer has power and you can command results. It was never recorded in the Bible. The hours of prayer, because it's not necessary. It is the answers to prayer that are recorded in scriptures. Rako Branza Zinas. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Marahaziat. Torah Mateliza Lavrinda Zagash. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. He was seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, great, great monarch of Zion. We install your name this morning for another privilege that we have to sit at your feet, to be instructed in your ways. And to be granted insight and understanding into the operations of your realm. Father, we ask this morning that even as we strive to gain ascendancy in the spirit, we will be brought to that point where we can see you as you are. So that every one of us will be transformed to become even like the very likeness of your being. We ask that this morning you will furnish us with the requisite equipping that we need in order to become functionaries that sustain the capacity to advance the frontiers of the kingdom. Father, we put away everything we've known that have militated against the move of the Spirit in our lives. And we ask that this morning, even beyond the voice of the teacher, we will hear the voice of him that is the custodian of all realities, and that by it we may be led into the place of spirit essence. We ask that even as we hear, as we learn, we may see beyond the things that our eyes can look. And you will bring us into that hub of intimacy where your spirit becomes truly one with humankind. 
so that the possibilities that are domiciled in your realm will begin to find expression in us and through us and to the end your glory will be seen on the earth even as the waters cover the sea take all the glory father we give you praise we give you glory thank you lord jesus Seated on the throne Hallelujah Glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father You are seated on the throne Hallelujah Glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I needed you to own that stuff because we'll be needing it from time to time. Praise the Lord. Um, we'll be looking at um, the ministry of the body. Because... Um, we are seeing how you can communicate ministry to your world. But before you can communicate ministry to your world, you need to understand what ministry is and the ministries that are available to a believer. In our world today, every young person that begins to see the gifts of the Spirit at work in his life or begins to sense hunger for the Lord, the next thing he feels is called into the fivefold ministry. There is a very well-defined sequence and progression that every believer must be subjected to in order to be able to walk in the fivefold ministry so when we talk about ministry there are two major things that, that comes to mind the word ministry as used in the scriptures is basically the word service service in the greek the major word for ministry is the word diakona and that's the word from which the word deacon is translated from. So the word ministry principally refers to service. And the question is, what kind of service are we talking about? Jesus said, the greatest of all must be the servant of all. In Mark chapter 9, verse 34 to 35. There will be times when we need to read the scriptures. So, as far as Jesus is concerned, growth in the kingdom, ranking in the spirit realm, Stature in the realm of God is not a function of giftings. It's a function of service. And that's why the man of God is honored. The man of God is not honored because there's anything special about him. The man of God is honored because God brings him to a place to serve others. So that statement Jesus made alone, it demystifies a lot of erroneous activities that we carry out in the body of Christ. The one who is the greatest of us all is the one that provides ministry. So, people pray and fast because they say they want to gain stature. Meanwhile, their heart is full of self, ambitions, proclivities and intensities of all kinds of desires. They don't understand that to rise in God is not a function of how endowed you are. To grow in the spirit is a function of the quality of service you can render. That's why they say the way to the top is down. So, the idea we are going to be communicating the cost of this is to show you how to go down so that Jesus can be elevated. John was providing ministry and he said, He must increase while I decrease. That's a summary of ministry. So everything you are going to be doing about, about giving expression to every essence that is within you is to go down so that Jesus can be made manifest. And that's what ministry is all about. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19, the Bible shows us the second very important thing that we must all take to heart. The first thing is what? Service. To give expression to Jesus. So that the world that is in desperate need of him can reach him. So when people meet you, it's Jesus they actually meet, not you. If every time people interact with you, they meet you. Then it means you are not doing ministry. You are not offering ministry. It's not about microphones. It's not about pulpit. It's not about platforms. It's about dishing out Jesus to the world. You don't know what this. Can I meet you? Say I'm Victor. And then you begin to talk about your credentials. And then you want to wow the people with your eloquence and your depth of insight. You want to pursue positions so that you gratify yourself. Self-exhortation. 
self-preservation have become the cardinal operational system of humankind. But ministry is what defies all of those human proclivities. In ministry, we come to a point where Jesus is expressed through us. And that's what the Bible also captures in 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19. In verse 17, the Bible said, Whoever is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. He said, Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. And then in verse 18, he says something very instructive. He said, All these things, they are of God. So the plan of God for you is to come to a point where everything that characterizes your constitution is of God. Your thought pattern, your communication. You see, people don't understand these things, so they feel spiritual maturity is all about leadership in church. They think growth in the spirit is all about acceptance of a spiritual institution. So people fight for ordinations. They feel because you are ordained in the church, maybe they gave you a color, they gave you a title, you have become an elder in the things of God. God doesn't judge eldership by status. God judges eldership by the degree to which you become like God. That's why I say all these things are of God. If you study First Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 1, you'll discover that in all of the credentials and criteria for eldership in the body, not, not one of them has anything to do with spiritual activities or spiritual giftings. It's all about the function of the likeness of God. So the Bible said, if truly you are born again, if truly you have become a new creation, everything about you should become the things of God. And that is when you will be able to dish out ministry effectively. Because when that is achieved, then verse 19 goes to tell us, he said, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, but he has given them the word of reconciliation. What's the emphasis of that scripture? It means every one of us is called into ministry. So long as you are a believer, you are called into what? Ministry. Remember, ministry is not title. Ministry is what? Service. So, are you born again? Yes. The first thing you need to know is that you are called into ministry. So, those are the two major things I want to show you. Ministry is service. And secondly, ministry is for every believer. Sir, you are called into ministry every one of us and in order not to leave us with a contradiction because even those in the fivefold are also rendering service i need to bring a a distinction between the fivefold ministry and the ministry of the believer before we delve deeper into it all right you see the difference the major difference you are going to be doing gifts of the spirit and all of that brother you get a book this is deception. This. All through my postgraduate days in school, I, I wrote on paper. You know, in undergraduates, you have many courses to write, and then it's progressive. So you do the 111 and 211 and 311. So you need to have a compilation. But when we came to postgraduate, sometimes a whole course is just for, a whole semester is just four courses. And these four courses, most of them are practical oriented. So I didn't see the need to buy a book. And I'm jotted on papers. When the exam came, I discovered I didn't know where the papers were. <laughs> and what I thought I, I mastered when I was in the class because they were explaining the whole thing was flowing. When the exam came, I discovered those things were, were stored somewhere in a temporary memory. <laughs> so the things I thought I knew when the exam came, I discovered I was deceived. So I realized writing on paper is delusion. Get a book. Somebody said the faintest writing is more lasting than the sharpest mind. Make no mistakes about that. <laughs> so let me talk about um, the five food and then the ministry of the believer. The major difference between we will keep this class very calm is an academic class. For those of you who are used to Wow, wow, mm, that is not for this for disappointing. When you want to charge during the time of tongues, charge. When we want to, if you want to go high in the spirit, when we are praying in tongues, ascend. At that time, you have liberty. Keep it calm, because if we don't keep it calm, I will lose a lot of things. I'm an extemporaneous preacher. If I begin to preach now, in ten minutes, this place will scatter. But most times, people are not built by preaching. People are built by teaching. This is not my kind of course. To be honest, I, this is a body. It's a body now that I'm teaching this. Is a body, is a body. That's why I wore suit so that I'll be calm. 
<laughs> it's a body. It's a serious body. But God will help us. The major difference between the fivefold ministry and the ministry of the believer is that the fivefold ministry is called to equip the believer. So the service of the fivefold ministry primarily is to equip others. Meanwhile, the services of the believer is to provide service that the body needs. So what the fivefold majors in is to equip the believer to understand who he is and the things he can do for the body to the degree that he begins to actually do those things. So if you interact with somebody in the fivefold, his duty is to bring you to a point where you know who you are in Christ. And on the strength of that knowledge, you begin to do what was written concerning you before the foundations of the world. So three of you can meet an apostle, for example. When you are with him for some time, you may become a helper. That dimension of God that was locked up in your spirit will be activated. And then the grace begins to express itself through you. So every time there is need for help, you come alive. Because you met the guy. The guy may not be in the position where he's doing all the helping, but he has equipped you to become an extension of God to provide help. The guy equips somebody else who is maybe in the ministry of administration. So after he works with the minister for a long time, a point comes when he, he, he abhors disorder. Anywhere there is disorderliness, he tries to put it together. It becomes his body. So he quickens the realization of your ordination in your spirit. That's particularly given to the fivefold. So an evangelist talks to you, for example, you will be so burdened about the urgency to come to God and then to become a soul winner. But you who is an, not an evangelist, you may go and win a soul and the soul will just be saved. But if you contact an evangelist, beyond your salvation, you will become a soul winner. So he has the ability to equip. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, there are many other things, but I'm trying to keep it basic. Because that's not that's also a part of this program. Alright? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, the Bible said, in fact, if you read from verse 8, it said, Him that descended is the same that ascended on high. And when he ascended, he gave gifts unto men. He said he left captivity captive, and he delivered them in his train. And he said he gave gifts unto men. And he said, To some he gave to be apostles, to some he gave to be prophets, to some he gave to be evangelists, and to some he gave to be pastors and teachers. And then he now described their their job. Or their modus operandi. He said, for the perfecting. The word perfecting is the word catadismos. It means to furnish with gifts. To furnish with ability. To furnish with light. To perfect the saint for the work of the ministry. So it is the believer that does the work of the ministry. Not the fivefold. Do you see the difference? So the work of the ministry is for the believer. Not for the fivefold. The assignment of the fivefold is to represent Jesus in the body to the body. The believer is called to do the work of the ministry, which is the service, either in the house of God or unto the world. Do you get the difference? That's very basic. That's basic. I'm not going any deeper to talk any other thing. That's basic. Alright? So, the fivefold equips the believer for the work of the ministry. That's the kind of work we do. But for the fivefold, the fivefold is like um, he's doing what Jesus would have been doing if he's here. Hope you know Jesus was doing something different. The disciples were doing something different. The disciples were the one providing all the other services that was needed in the body. Jesus was the one training. Do you get that? So the fivefold stands to represent the office of Jesus. If you are doing ministry offices, you are, they will show you how that Jesus is an apostle, teacher, pastor, evangelist. You see all of that. Okay? The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 50, 40, 53 verse 8, he said, who shall declare his generation? So the fivefold ministry is an extension of the office of Jesus Christ. The body of believer is a representation of the lifestyle of Jesus Christ. So get the two differences. That's why for somebody to be in the fivefold, for example, for you to be in the ministry of the believer, all you need to do is to sit under the fivefold. But for the fivefold minister to provide his own kind of service, he must be with the Lord. So Paul said to the church in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. But that is not meant for the fivefold. If you follow a man, you can never enter your calling. Men don't commission people into ministry. It's Jesus that commissions them. 
in Mark 3.14 he said, He called them to be with him, that he might send them. So, if you want to know whether you are called of the Lord, after you are trained to maturity, the fivefold teaches you the place of prayer, the place of the word, the place of service. You now come to a point where God begins to quicken hunger and desire in your life. A lot of people don't have that kind of hunger. That's why people who are called, somehow they have this intensity of hunger beyond the average believer. The average believer is satisfied that he loves God now. He's receiving testimony. Praise the Lord. Every Sunday, I trusted God. I misplaced my phone. And yesterday, somebody gave me an iPhone. Praise the Lord. Ah, my business, it was small. But now it's growing. God is opening door. His priority is to know God and to survive in this life. But there's another training that is on to death. Where God teaches you, He says, go to Meduguri. And then you know there's no hope in Meduguri. You leave your job. That one is not for an ordinary believer. If you tell him, you say, wait, wait till they talk. <laughs> you begin to quote scriptures of prosperity. You can't teach him that. You remember when John was born. John was the son of a high priest. John was born into affluence. But the Bible said in Luke 1 80, he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. That type of training is not for the believer, it's for the. That's why most of you that pursue apostolic, apostolic centers now, be careful to know where God has called you to be. If you are not called into the fivefold, don't go and sentence your life to prayer and fasting every day for five years, for ten years. You are wasting your destiny. I see a lot of young people who are wasting. God didn't call them into the fivefold ministry. But they finish school and instead of going to build their life, they go and stay in one cave and they pray for 10 years. After they have prayed for 10 years and exhausted themselves, then they will realize that their place is in the bank. Then they come back at the age of 35 and hold their certificate like this. In spiritual things, right? Allow God, just follow Jesus. Allow Him to quicken bodies. The Bible said it is God that walketh in us both to will and to do of His good pleasure. If you don't have a hunger that sustains the intensity of that level of service. Don't force it. You'll be walking in the flesh and you'll be weary. The sign that is the Holy Ghost doing something in you is that the more you do it, the stronger you become. It's a body. So there's a hunger God puts in the in the, in the, in the, in the bowels of those who he wants to bring into the fivefold. That thing will make them separate themselves unto the Lord because he called them to be with him. And then that God told you you're an apostle does not mean you're an apostle overnight. You have to be with the Lord first because He will teach you the tools of service. Your own kind of service is different. So you're not just come everywhere and say, God love you. God. That's not it. If you're an evangelist, there are tools of power that God will give you. If you're a prophet, there are visionary tools, revelatory tools that God will give you. If you have not gotten those tools, forget, you will go and struggle, and after 10 years, your church will be 15 people. You will do VG for 90, 90 days, your church will grow to 17 people. And then when I read, you begin to look for other things to do. So, stay with Jesus. If you know you are called, stay with Jesus. Alright? Stay with Jesus. The Holy Ghost was teaching me at some point and he told me something. The Holy Ghost told me, he said, if you are called, there are three major things that you must know before you step out. Remember, the Bible said he called them to be with him. So the calling is not into the world. People say, I'm called to be an apostle and they are going to the world. The calling is unto the Lord. You are not called into the world. You are called unto the Lord. But you are sent into the world. So he are, you are called to be with him before you are sent into the world. Some people are called and the way they are going is Congo. You are not called into the world. You are called to be with the Lord before you are sent into the world. And the Holy Ghost told me, before God sends a man that he has called, there are three major things he must have. The first thing he must have is that he must have come to a point where his job description is well communicated. That's what you call the mandate of the call. So you see people, they say they are called and then they are, they are looking for name of church. They are going to check corporate affairs commission to find the name that is open. <laughs> How funny. They don't know the mandate. Go and check every minister that is doing exploit. There are more than a hundred thousand pastors in this country. But there are a handful that are doing exploit. When you hear them, they will say, God told me. It's not a ref on the Bible that everybody should serve the Lord. That's not the call. The call is a definite mandate handed over to you. Pastor Chris Yakilome said, He has been called to carry the divine presence to the nations of the world, demonstrating the character of the Spirit. So when you come to his ministry, it's characterized by the miraculous. He does it with ease. It's an office speaking. So he sees the sick. He said, Out. 
cancer falls off. Somebody is paraplegic on the on the bed. He comes. Sometimes he walks around the person. He walks around the person. And then he does his hand like this. And he says, come on. And somebody who was down for 12 months just stands up. That's not just faith walking. That's an office work. He was called to do what? To demonstrate the character of the spirit. Bishop Oedipo will tell you that God sent him with a liberation mandate. A liberation mandate. So you go to living faith, you hear testimonies, your eardrum want to jump out of your ear. He saw Africa in poverty. He was in the US. He said, arise, get thee to Africa and raise for me a people. That's not in the Bible. It's a mandate. It's a mandate. That's how men are sent. So if you have not gotten a mandate, stay on that training. It may take 10 years, it may take 20 years, stay on that training. Until God gives you a mandate. Because that mandate will be your security. <laughs> if you don't have a mandate, the Bible said, thy horn will I exhort like the horn of a unicorn. It's your mandate that is your horn. So don't jump into ministry and say, we don't come, we don't come. You go come where, where. <laughs> Apostle Adam said, God called him to redefine the apostolic ministry. It's a rebirth of apostolic ministry and to trigger revival. So anywhere he talks, it's like a sting in the heart of people. People are pursuing him as if they want to. The Apostle Adam is the first preacher that I see that people pursue him to submit to him. He doesn't have their time. Meanwhile, other preachers are setting platform. You see teenage ministry. You see this, this. You see youth ministry. They are trying to gather people. Him is, is littering people everywhere. His word travels into your heart like a, a dagger. Because he's called to stick to trigger revival. It's a mandate. If you don't have a mandate, don't jump. You are not yet sent. You are called. Nobody is arguing it, but you are not sent. You are sent when your mandate is given to you. That's your commission. And the second thing the Holy Ghost told me. He said is that your location will be defined. We are not all, you don't just wake up and say, oh boy, things will happen for Lagos. <laughs> I will show you all these things from scriptures. <laughs> but these things are things that have misled many young people. So I need to establish it. Some of us had charisma from when we were children. In the university, I was, I was an orator. When they need to set two problems, they bring some of us. All I need to do is to have 15 minutes. I will, I will, I will sit down like this. When I come, I start talking, I will lower my voice. Then they will say, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. Then you talk, talk. When you finish, they will clap hands and go away and forget the problem. It was this same voice God will use for ministry. But God had not put power in the voice. So when I come those days, I thought because I was an orator, I will come and quote scripture, talk to you. Then people will clap and say, oh, but this guy, they speak English and go. <laughs> Nobody will sow a seed into your life because you speak English. They will submit clapping for you and go. So you do ministry for 10 years and hunger will kill you. <laughs> your safety is in the mandate, my brother. Tell your neighbor, say your safety is in the mandate. <laughs> People don't submit to you because they love you. I'm telling you the truth. They don't think about you. It's only when they have problems. And your mandate is the cure to human affliction. You see one million people pursuing Bishop where they could say, ah, they love him. They are Papa, Papa, Papa. Be joking. The day you hear that there is an allegation, that's when you will discover that everybody around you don't care. The mandate. And secondly, the location. I will show you all of these things from scriptures. You will be shocked. I don't know why I'm devin here now, but maybe God wants to talk to somebody. God wants to show somebody something. Because most of you here are called. When I came here, I began to interact with the energy of the people. I began to interact with the energy. So most of you are called. Most of you. Into different spheres. God will tell the man who he has sent, the location he's sending him. It's not an assumption. They don't assume those matters. Let me tell you. John said something. They asked him, they say, who are you? He didn't say, my name is John. That means, if you have not known your mandate, you don't have a definition in heaven. You are defined by your assignment. That's what we call ordination. A man who has not discovered his assignment has no recognition in heaven. You say, who are you? You say, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Remember, before John showed up, there was silence in Israel for 400 years. So nobody will dare say he's a prophet. Unless God himself told him, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Prepare a way for the Lord. He knew his man. So God gives you your mandate, he gives you your location, and he gives you a strategy. Why did he go to the Jordan River? You think that's the only place there's water? 
<laughs> I will show you some things you will laugh. And then I will show you even from the life of Jesus. They say, why have you come baptizing? He said, the one that sent me. He didn't say the one that called me. You know, most people say, the Lord that called. No, it's not God. The one that sent me. He said, the same said unto me, upon whomever you, the spirit alights and rest. He is the chosen one. He is the Messiah. So, baptism for him was a strategy. It's not like you woke up and say, okay, church is nice on Sunday. Sunday morning. That's when people go to church. So, it's service morning, Sunday morning. So, everybody's service now is Sunday morning. It's not written anywhere that believers must gather on Sunday morning. It's a sign that many other people are copying from others. You start apostolic work now because they say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is prayer. You do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is prayer. Meanwhile, what God wanted you to do is VG, VG, only VG. But because you didn't walk with Him to an ascended place where you can decode the utterance of your calling, you didn't know it was VG. So you came because you saw that Sunday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, things work. You now started your own Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You will play around for a long time. When you have done joking, then the principality will come and knock you out of ministry. Definite commissioning, definite location, definite strategy. Did you read about Jesus? After he was commissioned from the wilderness, in Luke chapter 4, verse 14, the Bible said he went in the power of the Spirit. And then this is what the Bible said. He said that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, the land of Zebul. Because the Bible said he pitched his tent by the borders of Zebul. Why did he pitch his tent there? That was where he was supposed to go. That's his location. He said that it might be fulfilled. It was spoken by Isaiah the prophet. The land of Zebul, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. You see specificity. He said that people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. So Jesus did not go to live in Zebulun because he felt like part of his ordination is to dwell there. The reason most people will be killed in ministry is because they are not staying where God told them to stay. If they happen for Lagos, so you go to Lagos, then you will sink in the crowd. You will just sink. So, the fivefold ministry is a definite call. Alright? Very definite. Know your mandate, know your location, and know your strategy. Else, there's no ministry. You are not yet sent. Even if an angel shows up like this and says, Peter, Peter, I have made you a prophet to the nation. Wait until those three things come. If not, you are called to be a prophet. You are not yet sent. That's where your equipping lies. Let's talk ministry, please. So there are nine ministries for the believer. At least the ones I know. I'm a student of Peter Tan. When it comes to biblical literacy. So most of my researches I dig through him. You know, in studying the Bible, there's what we call the principle of gleaning. We are very young. The Bible is big. How many times have you read the Bible? There are many things you don't know. So, because I will not read the Bible from cover to cover for five years or read it 40 times before I understand certain things, I look through the vent of those who have it. You know, Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, he said, Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation and doctrine. You can do reading, but for you to do doctrine and exhortation, it means you must look through the vistas of others. Because exhortation is a set of truth that have been communicated by somebody else to edify you doctrine and belief system that have already been established. So Paul is telling you, in addition to your reading, there are two other things that are more important. Exhortation and doctrine. So part of the people that constitute my my my, my well of exhortation are in Peter Town. In this subject, I have teachers for everything. When I deal with kingdom and priesthood, it's Benny Him and Pastor Chris and Derek Prince are my teachers. They, they have authority. They have authority. If you say kingdom, if you say priesthood, Benihim, Reverend, uh, Apostle Warum Elsa, and Derek Prince, they are, they, are, they are like rulers in that area. So, my brother, on this matter, Peter Tan is one of my teachers. The ministry of the deacon, the ministry of teaching, the ministry of prophesying, the ministry of exhortation, the ministry of giving, the ministry of administration, the ministry of mercy. There are two other ministries I didn't include because I won't have time to do justice to them. It's the ministry of healing and the ministry of tongues and their interpretation. So let's look at these seven ministries very quickly. The ministry of the deacons. That's the first ministry. And remember, the reason we are talking ministry is because understand ministry. And then as I'm explaining it, you will know the one that you have burden for. Because the Holy Ghost would have been furnishing that burden already. Those of you who are stingy, most likely your ministry is the ministry of giving. 
Ha 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 ha. When I explain it, then you will see why. You see how you are fighting on the nation. You are fighting. Jesus said it is hard to kick against the pricks. It's hard. So when you go anywhere, you will see why everybody that doesn't have standard will come and say, Sander, Sander. Nobody will come and say, ice cream, uh, money. Uh, they will cry. You say, I don't have money. Meanwhile, that money you have is in the account. You don't want one naira to take from it. The Holy Ghost will catch you today. So the ministry of the deacon, the, the full expression of that ministry is captured in Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. All right? Let's read it. It's actually from verse 5 that the deacons were selected. But just see the background so that you understand how the ministry of the deacon works. Acts 6 from verse 5. 1 to 6. And in those days when the numbers of the disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews. You see the first challenge? They were what? Murmuring. Arguments came in. So you will see what the ministry of the deacon handles. Are you seeing now? So their job is not to come and build and disciple people. See the first thing that made the co-opting of the diaconate. There was controversies. So you see, I will explain some few things. But we need to pick out the points. Yes. We are, um, the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministrations, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples. Are you seeing the need for administration? Some people were neglected. So equity was no longer part of the system. So you needed a form of intelligence to provide equity in the distribution of the resources that came into the body. Are you seeing that? And he said, it is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Three, wherefore brethren, look ye out among you. Seven men of honest report. Are you seeing the credentials? It's not seven men of power. Are you seeing that? It's not seven men of anointing. Seven men of what? Honest report. They have a track record of dignity. They have a track record of integrity. They are people. He says report. It don't, it's not by word of knowledge you come and say, you, you are an honorable man. No. They have a track record. These ones are men that are known to be honorable. So they are people you can commit matters of trust to. These are credentials for the deacon. Yes. Full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Wisdom. Because there's administration. Full of the Holy Ghost because the kind of wisdom they need to work with is not the wisdom of this world. I will capture it there, don't worry. Who we may appoint over this business? The deacons are appointed by men. Are you seeing that? The fivefold is appointed by Jesus. Are you seeing the difference? Verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same, and the same pleased the whole multitude. And they choose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip and Prosperous, and Nicanos, and Timon, and Penomes, and Nicholas, and Christians, and Antioch whom they said before the apostles and when they had prayed they laid their hands on them and the word of the Lord increased and the numbers of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly and the great company of the priests were obedience to the faith Eight, and Stephen full of faith and power we, we, are, we will go we will join it far. that's verse 8 right? yes sir we are going far we are going far now because what Stephen entered now, we shift him from that ministry to another ministry. So let's stop here. So that's where the ministry of the, of, the, of the deaconry or the diaconate was formed from. The idea was to handle matters that have to do with routine, everyday runnings. So the deacon is the one that is responsible for smooth operation of a system. That's why you see them littered everywhere. They handle matters of routine. The deacon is the one saddled with the responsibility of administration. There is a ministry of administration. I will come into it deeper. But they are also the ones that operate majorly in that ministry. They are the ones that tell you, um, we need money for, we need 5,000 monthly for Jen, 
We need this money to, for unforeseen contingencies. We need this money for light. We need this. They run the system. That's a wisdom that God gives. You may think it's, it's normal thing. Anybody can do it. If it's church, you'll, be, you'll, see, you'll see something. Because there are spirits that are interested in everything that happens in the church. So you need an empowerment of God to run the church. It is part of the office of the deacon. And another thing you see is that they serve the fivefold. So they came in to do what the apostles would have done, but the call would not allow them. So many people who are called into the fivefold, most times they begin as deacons. Because it is in the office of the deacon that large heartedness is taught you. There are certain things that are not cognitive, they are not doctrinal, they are experiential. You may think you are large hearted until they bring five people to live with you. And before you wake up, they are already talking and the whole house is noisy. After two weeks, you will discover that animosity, reproach, hatred will be building in your heart. You won't know where it's coming from. If you just see the people, you'll be irritated. You will think you know the doctrine until you enter. There are two things you need to know. Doctrine brings harmony to the mind. Obedience brings harmony to the spirit. Your mind and scripture, when you master doctrine, the word of God becomes your operating system. But it's until you obey that your spirit man can conform with the Holy Ghost. So, this type of services teaches the believer how to become like Christ. And watch it. That's why a man who does not serve can never be committed a serious responsibility in the house of God because he doesn't have experience. The office of the deacon is one of the most significant service office in the body of Christ. They provide administrative intelligence, they provide wisdom for guidance, they operate and address routine services in the body. And then they serve the fivefold, so that oftentimes the searchlight can fall on them. I itemize few people that serve in the office. You know, this is the ministry of the believer. It's not tied to New Testament. I need to say that quickly because I want to delve into the Old Testament. Somebody will say, ah, where well, these things in the Old Testament? The Holy Ghost was operating in the Old Testament. Are you there? That's why there are prophets in the Old Testament. Alright? The Holy Ghost was operating in the Old Testament. The only thing is that these are dispensational matters. So when we talk about the Holy Ghost, talk about tongues, we are talking about dispensational operations of the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't mean the Holy Ghost was absent from the world. Everything that is ever done in God, for God and by God, was by the ability of the Holy Spirit from the creation of the world. Alright? So these offices were already in operation. Joshua served as a deacon under Moses. And most times, God places his, the spirit of the set man over the one that serves him. There are three major ways of entering into an anointing. One of it is service. Another one is honor. One side, the third one. So Joshua served Moses. Exodus 24 verse 13. See what the Bible said about Joshua. In fact, the Bible calls him the servant, the minister of Moses. Somebody say, the way men of God are doing nowadays, they are acting as God. You didn't see anything. Though. Go and read the Bible. Exodus 7 verse 1. The Bible said, I have made you a God unto Pharaoh. Say, men of God, I just do it. I see they are God. You don't understand kingdom. See what the Bible said about Joshua. Exodus 24 13. Exodus 24 verse 13. And Moses rose up and, mini, and his ministers Joshua and Moses went up Did you hear that? to the mount of God. Joshua was not the minister of God. That's why I told you the deacon served the fivefold. Joshua was the minister of who? Of Moses. Joshua <laughs> was the minister of Moses. And that was God speaking. That's the office of the deacon. God brings you under a man whom spirit he will deposit in you so that you will do what he's doing. Because that man is an extension of Christ. And you will be, you will be brought into that lineage in the spirit. So he first of all makes you to serve that man. Joshua 1 verse 1. Say what the Bible says. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Joshua 1 verse 1. For those of us who refuse to serve, we will never be great. Just hear that one now. No matter now, how anointed you are. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, 
Moses ministered saying Are you hearing that? Do you see what the Bible said? Moses, the servant of the Lord Joshua, the minister of Moses That brings you to a point of humility He humbles you beyond beyond point You know you can even be serving a man and you are more anointed than the man And when they are in church on Sunday You just sit down shaking your head because it's when you, you come up for your five minutes charge that the church is on fire. When the man comes up, you just be operating your phone. Or you go outside. <laughs> you don't know what you are doing to yourself. Your wilderness journey will be far. The grace that works in people, the dimension of their expression is consistent with the configuration of the host of that grace. If that same grace on the man comes upon you, its operation will be different. Ora Roberts was a healing minister. He was the father of Kenekoko. When the healing grace that was on Ora Roberts came on Kenekoko, that grace became a grace for prosperity. So God calls men to do specific purposes, specific things for specific dispensation. So you can be serving a man who is only a teacher. It's an anointing. If that anointing comes upon you, you will become a prophet. Because by ordination you are a prophet. And your service to the body is for your own dispensation. So if you despise the man that God has designated to be your source in the spirit, you have robbed yourself of your manifestation. That's what a lot of believers don't know. And they become arrogant. The office of the deacon beyond service is an office that educates the believer on the conduct of human living as a kingdom entity. You must come to that point where you realize that you can never amount to anything in God until you serve another. So when you are called to a ministry, called to a place to provide service, understand that it's you giving expression to the life and the nature of Jesus. Because ministry is the service of Jesus to humankind. That must be your operating system. The Lord don't have it. That's why you see so many arrogance in church. Somebody goes on Facebook and said, uh, Kenneth Hagin is wrong. Kenneth Hagin <laughs> Kenneth Hagin <laughs> Did you read about Aaron and Miriam? They were working with Moses So they thought we are all ministers All of us are leading Israel <laughs> we, we, we are, we are. Miriam was even a prophetess eh? They were challenging Moses Can I tell you something? You are not called to correct your father you are called to pray for your father. It is God who called him that will call him to stand and order him. If your father is in error, pray that somebody at his level will tell him. Or pray for God to open his eyes. You know why? Because if you are not careful, the devil will deceive you. And if you be to correct him, you will fall into the error of harm. Do you know what harm did? He was cursed forever. Be wise. In serving God, you can destroy yourself. Paul said, because some don't discern the body, they die. So you came to church to receive salvation, you will die in church. They handle the body of Christ unworthily. He said, because of that, many sleep. In 1 Corinthians 11, 33, he said, many sleep. So you came to the corporate assembly where you should be blessed. That's where your judgment got you. You know, people don't understand. They say we are in grace. You, you know, laws are rigid operational models. They don't change. That's New Testament. Many, God killed them because they don't discern the body. You see the current saga that is going on. Somebody will come and say, my opinion about Fatu Ebo, who are you? Your opinion in which pool? What authority do you represent? Who is asking for your opinion? <laughs> You just see, you see the babyhood nature of the church. Baby, did you read the Bible? In 1 Timothy 5.17, it says, Concerning an elder, receive no accusation, except in the place of two or three witnesses. The man we are talking about is an elder. He said, Concerning an elder. Then a loose lady comes out and says something because he knows rape is a, is a big crime. And you have not verified. Nobody is saying we are callous towards somebody who is raped. But where are the facts? 
who are the witnesses? Do you know that today in Egypt, Joseph is still guilty of Potiphar's wife? It's because you are reading as a third party. That's why you understand and say, Kai, this woman. If you were in Egypt, you will stone Joseph. And this is not taking sides with the man of God. I'm just teaching you how to be cautious. He said, concerning an elder. Why is that so? The Bible said in preceding verses, he said, the elder is worthy of double honor. So for the sake of honor, you will not speak until it is proven beyond doubt. Don't use sentiment to judge matters that have to do with men in authority. You've got to be wise. And for David, because of his level of understanding, even though Saul was guilty, he said, I choose not to publish it in the streets of Ashkelon. As a man who has grown in stature, he said, publish it not in God, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Let the daughters of the Philistines be glad, and the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. You don't raise an attack against the body. You think it's about two people. <laughs> you are joking. When you know the truth, you will repent and cry for many years. Be very careful. Allow God to judge his own. Even if a man of God is proven to be guilty, just pray for him. Pray for him. It's not a story that a man who God has called fair. It's not a story. It's not a news. It's a matter that should make men to weep. Men, of, men should cry. Christians should weep. Even if the man is proven guilty, we should weep. It's not a news headline. We behave like the people of the world. I choose not to publish it in the streets of Ashkelon. <laughs> people don't understand. Elisha served Elijah. They are babes, though. The church has not grown. Now you will see the people in the same in that congregation now. They will be supporting the man of God. Say, how oh, that is sentiment. It's not maturity. Take note. Because if it happens to another pastor, they will crucify him. The way you are crucifying this one because it's not your pastor. We are babes. We don't walk by scriptures. We don't walk by the leading of the Holy Ghost anymore. Jesus Elijah served Elijah. First Kings chapter 19, verse 21. There are certain things that if they hear it, pray about it, let the devil not take an advantage. You pray it to die. If the thing didn't kill you for 20 years, you will not die now. The devil will seize an occasion to cause havoc to the church. You will not know how many believers will backslide because of this news. Because we don't see the bigger picture. He, he re, and he returned back from him and took a yoke of bosom and slew them and boiled their flesh with the instrument of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. Then First he, Kings 19.21 Yes, sir. Somebody open Second Kings 3.11 um, I think that's where God, the Bible said Elisha who poured water Is there not a prophet Is there not a prophet of the Lord That we may inquire of the Lord by him And one of the kings of Israel's servants Answered and said Here is Elisha the son of Shaphat which poured water on the hands of Elijah. Do you see that? Before Elijah became a prophet in the land, he first of all did what? Poured water in the hands of Elijah. That's the office of a deacon. We are here serving Apostle Solomon. And it's an honorable thing for if Apostle even smiles and say how far, you will be so excited. When your heart is connected to a man and you honor him, see, grace will flow like a river. I'm telling you the truth. See, the grace will flow to you like a river. If I must be we, we just want to hang around. You say, ah, how far? You say, sir, sir. You, your, your joy is complete. <laughs> That's how you enter into inheritance. It's not by high service. The one people are, when they see man of God, they hear, bo, 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 kapea, bo, atata, bo, bo, Hey, hey, you will do boko boko bo for ten years. I was just Suleiman said he said he, 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 he told the story. He said when they were in Benzi Dahosa's house, they did have Bishop Benzi Dahosa. He said many people come. Papa, Papa, Papa. If Papa is around, if Papa can't cough again. 
they just want to pa, 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 pa. Uh, they will, I had this dream I saw this vision an angel appeared no, no. so that they were not going to hear them say hey you just pass like this the young bishop will say you this are someone you know they look up he said that was washing cars and doing other things today if you row us you don't need to be told you will see best in the house see the dimension of grace they are walking all the people in the house pa, 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 they have gone to oblivion because what they needed was temporary gratification. They had it. Service. Pure service. Paul had deacons. Acts 19.22 The other ones will just speak through them. We'll need the mic. We'll need the mic so that um, Acts chapter 19 verse 22 so he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Do you see that? Timothy was Paul's deacon. But a point came, Timothy became the bishop of Ephesus. And Timothy was ordaining elders. So they channeled service unto greatness, service unto glory. I'm saying this thing so that tomorrow when you go on social media, it will not be a place to say, Afana. How today? Oh boy, no, it's what? I tell you, where we are, I tell you. I tell you. <laughs> they will understand that it's a place of service. And you will understand the quality of service you will render. As a deacon in this place, when I go anywhere, I, I communicate the body of this house. My messages are everywhere now, but I keep talking alignment. I keep talking righteousness. I keep talking. Because that's the body of the. I'm, I'm an ambassador of the heritage of God that is communicated. So, so long as I'm here, it is the body of this house that is my body. That's the ticking. And it is a natural thing. It's not like me trying to preach it. God brought me here because I'm part of this house. So everywhere I go, on social media, every platform, is not like okay. So they invite a person for meetings in Istanbul and say, Oro, Oroko, where are you there? Go there. He doesn't need to go and ask them what did he preach. He knows that I preach what he would have preached. It's a practice of the people. And that's what the Christian span. He said concerning Timothy, he said that things you have received from me, the same communicate to faithful witness, faithful men who shall be able to teach other people that are the people. So that everywhere you go, you become an extension of the kingdom of creation. Lastly, Jesus had taken. You will see that the first of the people are going. See the way Jesus is taking the world. Look. And Joanna, the wife of Koza, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Did you hear that? There are some deacons that minister to the men of God with their substance. We love this kind of deacons. <laughs> so when Jesus wants to travel, they say, is it Nazareth? Okay, they will just drop something. The food Jesus was eating. Every, it came to a point where Judas was carrying a purse. Because Jesus had deacons. So those of you that only suck from your father and the Lord, you are a, you are a leech. <laughs> There's a difference between a leech and a deacon. You will go to servant twelve midnight. Papa, Papa, the devil has come again. On Monday, Papa, I want to travel. Tuesday, Papa, my father is sick. Wednesday, Papa, the devil. Or God, Papa, the man of God, true. He also uses physical energy. When will be the last time you say, Daddy, I, I just sent 100,000 to your account. It's not because I'm looking for anything. I'm being a deacon. Some people only receive. That's why you are small. You will keep receiving because you'll be empty. If you want to enlarge, give. It is part of the office of the deacon. They are the ones that make ministry sweet. The deacons, they are very important. So they are dear to the heart of the court. And that's why most times the graces of the court fall on them. I, was, I came here for seven months. I didn't go, I didn't even care about talking to the man of God. After contact, I'll just carry my envelope. Thank you, sir. I will, will. People are lining up, so I want to talk to the bottom, especially when power moves. You know, people are so kind. The day power doesn't move, they'll say, glory to God, glory to God. But when power moves, you'll see people. 
They want to touch what they want. They will touch like that and remain babes for 10 years. As I am, almost all the senior ministers in this country might see that I've entered the account. They don't know me. I don't need them to know me. Bishop Oedepo said he sold into Copeland's, Kenne Copeland's ministry for 30 years. The first time they meet was after 30 years. When they met, Kenne Copeland removed the suit and gave him to wear. When he wore it, he said, it fits. He said, yes. He said, I guess it's a mantle. He said, you got it. Bishop said, I guess it's a mantle. The man said, you got it. <laughs> they don't need the first time they met. This man was led, removed his suit, gave him. And Bishop said, I guess it's a mantle. He said, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Every time when the man of God is around, I want him to see you. Yeah, no, no. Five times you are bending down. What, what kind of slave is this? I sowed seed into a person for seven months, and in those seven months, I was praying for him one hour every day, and I was listening to his messages eight hours every day before I went for service. That was in 2011. The first day I came here, they said, Lead prayer. I carried the mic. I spoke for 30 minutes. That day, Chief Don called Apostle in Lagos. He said, Somebody has received your spirit. It's now that I don't talk like Apostle because I've not heard him for two years. Those days, if I cough, you think it's Apostle. They, you don't, I don't need to meet a man to receive what he carries. He said, If you give a cup of water to a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive the prophet's reward. You enter into what makes him who he is. Many don't know. They run around. A cup of water. The office of the deacon. That's why the deacons are the ones that receive the heritage of men. Because they understand the principles. There are many people who are in remnant here for five years now. They've never sown into a person. It's every, after every new session, they come to collect school fees. <laughs> you will collect school fees for a long time. <laughs> Even after my ordination, I went to his house with a very fat gentleman. And I did very fast because I got that the money. It's not like I, I carry one check. I got that the money. After the other, I went with an enemy. That's how you be blessed. But keep listening. When Pastor Chris started out, the miraculous was terrible. So companies came to him and said they will sponsor his, his ministry. It was tempting. All they needed was that during his crusade, their logo would just be there. Then when he went to pray, God said, Don't. He said, If you do it, your men will not be great. He said, let the people sponsor the work and I will bless them. Today, even the music ministers give money in thousands of dollars. Men like Joe Great give $2,000 for normal services. They have become big. Frank Edward gave in millions. 400 million. They are big. Everybody is big. It's not just about the pastors. Even music ministers. They are global entities. Sinatra is the second minister on YouTube that have hit 100 million likes. Few people, they are big because they understand the system of giving. It's a wisdom that works in the office of the diaconate. And the last thing the deacons do is that through administrative intelligence, they guide the church to operate within the confines of the mystery of faith. You know, the mystery of faith works with a good conscience. Because of zeal, a man of God can say, we want to do this, we want to open this brand, we want to open this brand, and when you ask him, he say by faith. The deacon will come and say, no, there's also by wisdom. Because if you go beyond the level of your faith, you will crash. So God brings the deacon to sustain the work through wisdom. It is an operation in the office of the deacon. Because if we go by faith, by faith, a man of God will release the whole money that came in for six months for one project. And you say, if you ask him, you say, God will provide. My God shall supply all my need. Oh, God, wait. Before you quote those scriptures, check the conscience radar. Is it at rest? So the deacon will bring wisdom so that the house can be upon Next, now we will speed wrong because the ministry of teaching. This is different from the office of a teacher. This is a committer of teaching responsibility to faithful men. So that they can walk within a local assembly. Alright? So, like, um, before I was ordained, I was teaching him. Alright? They come for service. Apostles are not always around. All the senior ministers are not always, always around. So they say, okay, come up and give a charge. I won't stand up and say, I'm a teacher. And I can't go somewhere, and then they ask you, who are you? You say, I'm, I'm a teacher. No, you are not sent to the body. 
you are appointed in the local assembly to provide the services of teaching because you have been counted faithful. Alright? That's what's captured in 2 Timothy 2 verse 2. It said that things, okay, read it. Read it. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. So you see, there are faithful men that also teach in the body. It doesn't mean they are teachers. Alright? It doesn't mean they are teachers. Many of you here are teachers and you've been teaching the gospel. Am I correct? Or well, it doesn't mean you go and say, I'm a teacher. My office is the office of a teacher. After some time, you begin to have two, three words of knowledge. You say, I'm a prophet. You will become a, a bundle of contradiction. So it's a ministry in the body of Christ. And the, the cardinal emphasis of the teaching ministry is to build up. Is to build. Without the office of the teacher and pastors, the church will look like an amoeba. You know, many people think the office of the prophet is more important. Some say the office of the apostle is more important. You don't understand it. People are built by the teaching ministry and people are guided by the pastoral ministry. That's why they are so, so charismatic. Because the idea is to build. It takes time. It takes patience. And if a teacher understands this, he will be at peace. There's no competition. It's the teacher that builds a believer teaches you the ways of God and mastery of doctrinal emphasis so that you will stay accurate and you will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Your stability and safety in the kingdom is predicated upon the office of a teacher. It's too important. And most of you who began from prayer ministries, as you just gave your heart to Christ, you said 10 hours in tongues. You spoke in tongues. After three months, you started seeing vision. You will think you are mature until the crisis of life comes. That's when you know you are a babe. You see somebody who says senior prophet, and then there's a little crisis. Prophet have been shut. Anger have not been tamed. He didn't even know when he did it. Then he says, sorry, sorry. Senior prophet, a fair lady came to church, and the next thing he wants to counsel the fair lady. Fair lady. And he doesn't, they are not cocktail lost. Because he was not taught how to gain mastery in the things of God. He just pro- prayed and broke into the spirit realm. That's why I see a lot of contradiction in the body of Christ. Because teaching priests are lacking. One thing rises, nobody can challenge it. They say, tight, tight, tight. One man, one untrained and unschooled man, just came because he read some things, came and, and challenged the whole body of Christ. And it was a saga for months. You would think we are mature until there is crisis, real life crisis. Because the teachers and the technicians are building the infrastructure of the spirit. And we don't have so many of them. So when a man is faithful, he is committed that ministry of teaching and you need to know that it is specific to a local assembly that you are you have the teaching ministry does not mean you are sent to the body before you come in your local assembly you are teaching righteousness and then you now say you are addressing the body of Christ this is what righteousness means calm down sir talk to that local assembly where God has placed you because there are a lot of intricacies that you don't have the scope and visibility in the spirit to capture even in the ministry of prophesying, you see a young man come and say, I want to tell Nigeria, Nigeria, do you know the scope of the borders of Nigeria? Which Nigeria? Who told you you can prophesy to Nigeria? There is a lot of priesthood intelligence that is involved in the authority scope that a spiritual man has. If your spiritual radar have not covered the territory, you don't have authority over that territory. If you like, declare for money tonight, you wake up one day and see white beards on your That's why people disgrace themselves. So, election is coming. Say, God told me, this is the person that will win. Then later you see that the person didn't even make the primaries. Your vision is meant for a particular context. You came to church, you see, you gave word of knowledge to two people. Then you want to now talk about Nigeria. The reason Samuel could regulate Israel was because his anointing, his radar in the spirit, covered the whole territory. The territory was under his ambience. Is that I did a teaching on priesthood intelligence. I taught some of those things. People don't know how these things work. Some people stand up and in their family, they are working like this because now they have been ordained ministers. They think they have authority. Then they are wondering why they are saying things and it's not happening. Your, your radar have not captured those people. So you don't have authority to regulate the things happening around their lives. The Bible said the Epaphras in Colossians 4.12 who is also one of you, a born servant of Christ, laboring perfectly for you in prayers that you may stand perfect 
and complete in all the will of God. So a Epaphras could speak to the church in Colos because his radar covers that church. If you see the writings of Paul to the church in Rome and the church in Galatia, they are different. He vetted the church in Galatia. He was a visitor to the church in Rome. So he only advised the church in Rome. But when he came to the church in Galatia, he called them foolish. They are his children. That, those are spiritual intelligence that a lot of you don't understand. So a teaching, one who has a teaching ministry is vocalized. In Acts chapter 18, verse 26, we are going to see it. Okay, 26. And in the synagogue, who when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto them more perfectly. That's Apollos. You know, the Bible says Apollos was mighty in words and deed. But his, his insight into revelation of progress, progress, progress of revelation was not enough to cover a lot of scope. Why he was teaching in that local assembly, they said Apollos was mighty in words. But here comes senior guys, Aquila and Priscilla. They said, come, come, come. This thing you are saying, this way end. This is another part. So when you are teaching the congregation, God begin to say, Lord, this principality is over this land, uh, this territory, this nation. Wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. Be careful. Declare according to your level of what? Of faith. It will help you. Because we are we are funny people, especially now that there's Facebook. You go and say something and you are addressing the body of Christ. Or you are <laughs> be wise. Be wise. When you want to post something, check with the Holy Spirit first. Don't just release this because the inspiration came. The guy was teaching with very every sense of assurance. But they came and said, kai, kai, this thing is wrong. It's like this, it's like this. They said they taught him the way of God more accurately. So the teacher is deficient. The one who has the, the ministry of teaching is deficient. He needs to be schooled. Romans 16 verse 3 and 5. 3 to 5. Priscilla and Aquila, Those were the guys that trained Apollos. Jesus. Who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. Are you seeing the difference now? This one, the churches, they have authority over the churches of the Gentiles. So you see that their scope was superior to Apollos. Likewise. So they will come to educate Apollos. Are you there? Let's just, there's no time. First Corinthians 16, 19. 16, 19. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you much in the Lord. Are you saying they are reader? With the church that is in their house. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, that's just um, basically. They determine the maturity and quality of the believer. So, as touching growth, it is the office of the teacher that instructs you. You know, growth is not imparted. Growth is a process. So, matters of the word, matters of prayer, you'll be taught. That's why I say it is the teacher that determines the quality of your maturity and growth. Because your maturity and growth is predicated upon your revelation on the, of the word and then your engagement in prayer. So they will teach you how to go about these things. That's why you can receive a gift but you are still a baby. Unless you touch the ministry of, of teaching. Next. Ministry of prophesying is not the same as the office of a prophet. Alright? You can have the gift of prophesying and then at, as you begin to grow in, the, in grace, you discover that the scope increases. The scope increases. So prophesying becomes like, it becomes like a part of you. You know? It doesn't mean you are a prophet. I've already shown you from the beginning the procedure required for one who is called. Alright? And for one who is sent. So I wouldn't need to overemphasize. It doesn't mean you are a prophet. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 to 11, it talks about the gift of prophecy. And then, of course, if you study 1 Corinthians 14, once and again, Paul talked about prophecy, prophecy. You see that Paul told the whole church at some point to prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 5. He encouraged the church to prophesy. Because the ministry of prophecy, it brings edification. It brings exhortation. It brings comfort. Alright? So, it's very important in the body. In fact, Paul said at some point that it is more important than the ministry of tongues. Unless there is what? Interpretation. 
So we need the ministry of prophesying so much in the body that Paul encourages the whole church to prophesy. So only that nowadays we excel more in um, we excel more in tongues. So somebody just carries the mic. At least say praise the Lord. Let people stand up. As he just carries the mic, he's kupu kate kuwa kikuva. That's why sometimes you are praying. Ha, ba, 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 ha, ba, ha, ba. When you remove the mic, then you discover everybody is like this. <laughs> Everything the place is charred. You are doing. Ba, 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 ha, ba, ha, ba. When you remove the mic, then everybody is like this. They are not edified. You are now edified. You are built up, but the people are not edified. So you need the ministry of prophesying. But the ministry of prophesying is something you develop when you are rich in the word of God. Because prophecy is not prophecy is not revelation prophecy has nothing to do with revelation that's what a lot of people don't know so when they say the prophetic they think it's about vision no that's not prophecy if you see the past and the present it's called word of knowledge if you see the future it's called word of wisdom prophecy is it has threefold exhortation comfort and edification it builds people up it encourages people and it strengthens them. It has nothing to do with vision. Prophecy is spirit energized communication. It is the Rema word of God spoken in the direction of somebody. So when you come to somebody and then you charge him with the word of the Lord, you have prophesied to the person. A lot of people don't understand the operation of prophecy. They mistake prophecy for word of knowledge. They mistake prophecy for word of wisdom. They are different things. And that's why we can grow the gift of prophecy. So, learn to prophesy to people. You meet somebody who is depressed. You begin to talk to the person. God loves you. The Lord loves you. And then as you are talking, maybe your spirit is dead. And then you begin to tell the person that this challenge will not destroy you. You will rise stronger above this challenge. And then you will grow beyond this challenge. This challenge will become a thing of the past. And you will give testimony. It will end in praise. And before you know the spirit, the person is edified. And then that thing that looks so big becomes small. That's why you see ministries where people prosper, ministries where they prophesy. Go and check living faith, you'll be shocked. The church, they keep talking growth. So the church is enlarging like an elephant. They keep talking progress. So everybody is prospering. But you, every time you speak, it's about death. Ah, death, 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 death. Or poverty. Or dealing. Or wilderness. Even when you are in a crisis, as you pray, do you know why some people can't pray in their understanding? They are not rich in the word of God. They are not rich. If you, if you are rich in the word of God, you can't be down. You will prophesy to yourself. I begin to pray. Sometimes I hear myself saying, I'm anointed. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. No challenge stops me because I am, I am, a, I am a con- I'm more than a conqueror. I say I have the mind of Christ. I can't lack. I can't fail. Things are working for me. And then before you know, I begin to charge. Because those words they defy. A lot of people are not saturated with the word. So they don't prophesy to themselves. They can't prophesy to others. Every time they talk to people, they are depressed. You need to grow in prophesying. When you are teaching, tell people, you will be mighty. It shall not come to pass in your life that you will fail. You will be great. And those things you are saying, the spirit of the Lord will energize and animate it. You wake up in the morning, you don't wake up and, Oh Lord, have mercy. Oh Jesus, the world is so bad. Oh, help us, help us, help us. And then you think you are doing something. Imagine a child come to the father. Pastor Chris gave this illustration many years ago and it changed my life. Daddy, please can we have breakfast? The father will say, what's wrong? Are you okay? Do you have high fever? What do you mean what's wrong? When you come and say, I want breakfast. That's how you talk. In the natural you are educated enough, but in the spirit you are daft. Lord, uh, uh, we have Lord, have mercy. If you what? So you need to entreat the Lord for Him to show you mercy or to help you. I rise up and say, I am mightily blessed of God. That's how I talk to myself. I build myself up with the word of God. I'm mightily helped of God. The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places because I have a godly heritage. Even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for the Lord is with me. It does something to your neurological process. It does something to your physiological process. If you like, try this thing. Wake up in the night, come out and you want to pray. 
and then begin to think about violence or begin to remind yourself about the stories they told how they were shooting gun last week you will be afraid you will run back to your bedroom <laughs> you don't know how wars impact you wars have the ability to edify or depress when you see people who commit suicide the problem is they are not full of the world when you are full of the world before any challenge comes he knocks it out the bible said guide your heart with all diligence proverbs 4 23 out of it are the issues of life how do you guide your heart in verse 20 to 22 the bible said my son attend to my word give thy ears to my saying let them not depart from thy eye put them in the midst of thy heart he said for their life to them that find them that's what the ministry of prophesying does it in, it invokes life into your vessel when you see somebody who is suffering prophesy to the person and not long enough you will see the person right that's what we even do when we minister to the sick it's also a ministry of prophesying the guy has cancer the guy is depressed it's obvious but you look away from what is wrong with him and you talk the word of god you say be healed in the name of jesus you have prophesied to the person and if you have grown in it life will be communicated some of us do it for people who don't know how to do it for ourselves you are depressed you are feeling bad oh my god it's time to roar if people will not make you comfortable go and lock the door that's where you can do some holy ghost madness sometimes you begin to jump you can't do it in the public so lock the door sometimes if i want to go mad i i play songs and i put it very loud even if i'm shouting you can't hear what i'm doing and then i go crazy i go crazy as i'm speaking in tongue you know when you speak in tongue and you are edified then the word of god begins to flow like a tap i can't even remember the scripture now but when i'm stared you need to hear prayers when you don't only speak in tongues brother prophesy it will change your circumstance it will cause things to work in your favor it will level the mountains for you that's how god works god saw a world that was full of chaos he never mentioned it if not that moses wrote the story you would not have known that there was darkness in this world because god will never speak it he said his spirit hovered upon the waters but what did god say let there be light he doesn't have any business what he's looking for is not darkness so why will he talk the darkness he talk light that's how god operates it's an economy of the divine you you are in crisis you are sick you have told one thousand people oh boy days ago uh, i'm sick uh, the doctor said this but you have never told what yourself what god said he said let no one in zion say i'm sick have you heard that before he said let the weak say i'm strong have you heard that before it's called the ministry of prophesying there are people who are experts in this thing have you heard of the hills if he talks to you for 30 minutes you'll be jumping even if you are sick you forget your sickness that's why we minister healing when we come we don't talk about the sickness we tell them what god has done and after a while what god has done becomes more real to them then the healing power can flow because they came to the service enraptured with their their crisis you now talk them away from their crisis at that point they can surrender to jesus and receive it's the ministry of prophesying many believers are not schooled all the scripture they know is about bad luck it's about alignment it's about dealing it's about suffering they think when they suffer they please god you will suffer the world is actually suffer so you will suffer <laughs> and this is not in any way trying to exonerate the dealing of the holy spirit all right there are things that the lord takes you through in order to build you up but my brother if the lord begins to witness to you the direction he wants you to go facilitated by prophecy see some of us were telling ourselves we can't be small we told ourselves that we must be heard even when we are talking among other ministers we talk as if we have a superiority complex it's not an egoistic thing it's confidence in the word of god it didn't show nothing looked like it but brother now as i'm talking to you all my week is booked the end of november i go to virtually every state of this country every weekend i spoke it I heard Bishop Wendeko. He said, I'm not surprised where we are today because we didn't come. I, eh, that's not what he said yet. This is what I want to say. He said, I'm not afraid about tomorrow because we didn't come here by chance. <laughs> Have you heard that kind of thing before? I, I, I didn't come here because I was lucky. If you know God wants you to work in the political sector or in the government or in the oil sector, begin to speak it. You will cause the lines to fall for you in place and place. That's how God operates. It's called the ministry of prophesying. You have your business. 
we are not talking about it. We are waiting for a prophet to come and talk over your business. You are joking. Some of those prophets is seed they are looking for. Their heart is not even in it. You are the one who will wake up every day, lock the door in your shop. One hour before you start business and you are talking your shop forward. You are prophesying your shop to where you want it to be. It's going to be the best in the state. You tell yourself how governors will come to patronize you. It may not look as if it's working. After some time, you will see the difference. When Jesus spoke to the fig tree, it was as if nothing happened. But the next day when they came, he withered from the roof. Because when you begin to prophesy, you deal with the matter from the roof. Talk your way to the top. You will think this thing, it's not you psyching yourself. It's you vocalizing the word of God. Is you aligning the word in the Greek is called homologia, it means accepting what God has said concerning you. You are aligning with the word, and not too long, the Holy Ghost will energize it. It's the ministry of prophesying. We talk ourselves down too long, too much. Go and check the men that do exploit, see how they talk. Their word does not betray their results, they talk their results, and they keep having it. You, you are talking one thing, you are when you go to pray, you are praying another thing. You are telling everybody, yeah, you are going through a process of dealing, and even if it lasts for five years, and the way you go to pray, pray, Father, make me rich. Are you, what are you, the angels that are working with you, they will like, ah, what's this guy doing now? The ministry of prophesying. And you see, it's a tool for the last day church. It's a tool of warfare. Because demons are not, they don't know everything. Demons work most of the times based on what you say. In Ephesians 3.10, the Bible said we have been called to make manifest the wisdom of God to principalities and powers. Most times, demons are energized in your life because you told them you are afraid. Uh-huh. You are afraid. Uh-huh. Then you begin to hear, see inspirations of fear much more. You are traveling, you are afraid. This journey is just go make up. Uh-huh. Then the demons begin to walk. Pastor, please said something. He said the earlier days when he started doing crusades, the Holy Ghost told him, He said, if you enter a territory and when you begin to minister, He said, declare what I have used you to do. He said, why? He said, because if the demons hear and know that you were the one I used to do that, they will become afraid of you. So you raised the dead last week and you came from that crusade, you declared, God used me to raise the dead. Then the demons will so that story we heard that somebody raised the dead in Makodi is Smith. Then every demon that came with death will just escape. <laughs> I raised the cripple yesterday by the power of the Holy Ghost, and today the cripples will rise. So he was the one that raised those cripples. You know, they are breaking news in the demonic realm. You don't know. <laughs> he said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know who are down. The guy is not popular in the demonic. <laughs> you come to a place, it's a prayer meeting. You tell them by grace you have prayed for 10 hours for 3 months. Every spirit of weakness will just escape. They know this one is a failed mission. You know they don't have too much resources. They are not the hell shall die. So they don't waste their resources. You show up. Sometimes I come for a meeting. I say, ah, you will be on fire. You will never sin again. I will tell them that with the miracles in this meeting, it will blow your mind. And the people are like, they don't even know. I'm not talking with them more. I'm taking charge of the spiritual atmosphere. They think I'm talking to them. I don't even have their time. If I want to talk to them, I will open the word of God. I'm addressing the spirit realm before I begin. I create an atmosphere that is conducive for my ministry. It's called the ministry of prophesying. They don't know how it works. Wait until the day of impartation. When I come here, before I begin, all of you will be fine. <laughs> when I say it, even the angels will be mobilized. They will be, you will be, you will see what will happen now. Don't worry. <laughs> Sometimes I go for a meeting, I'm so tired. Then I tell them, in the last 10 minutes, I will wear the garment of fire. They don't know that I'm, I'm interact, I know what I'm interacting with while I was talking. And then when that 10 minutes reach, I'm talking to the Holy Ghost, help me, help me, help me, help me. Meanwhile, I've prepared the atmosphere. Then suddenly strength comes. Oh yeah. You, you need to know how the spirit realm works. Most of the things people declare, you think they, they God showed them. My brother, see, it's an intelligence. A spiritual intelligence. <laughs> you come, you declare fear. Say, we are trusting God to help us in this meeting. Uh, we can't do anything. You can't do anything. Okay. Me, I know something. 
He said, unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you can think or imagine, by the power that works within. There's a power that works in me, so I can do all things. <laughs> you don't know, people don't understand. It's called the ministry of prophecy. Paul said the whole church will prophesy. How many times have you prophesied to your business? How many times have you prophesied to your education? I'm running a PhD program now. Most times I don't go for a lecture for four weeks. I say I can't fail. Even if it's one person that passes me. <laughs> this, is not, this is not talking. This is an assurance in God. He said they that do know their God will be strong and do explore. I'm talking from the realm of revelation. And most times it's the morning to the exam. I carry the book. Where I open is where the questions are coming from. I don't score C's. It's because I don't have time. My least grades are, are B's. I don't I can't score a C. I'm not an average person. I tell myself I am beyond average. How can I how can him and me average? How? If you tell me, I'll be shocked. It, it can't happen. It has prepared my mind to conduct the power of God. The mind is the conductor of the power of God. Somebody asked John Zinek, he said, How are you able to hold a virus in your hand? And you are not affected. He said, I have exercised my soul in eternal life. There are some men, you hear men like Pastor Please say, Anything I do works. If you don't want it to work, don't bring if you want it to work, then don't bring me in. If you don't want it to work, don't bring me in. Because the moment I come, even if he's failing, it will work. And then he searches somebody whose health is failing, the health begins to work. It's a mindset. That's what conducts the power. Most of us, our mind have constituted a blockage to the flow of the life of God. Prophesying is what aligns your mind to the mind of God. It's a very significant ministry in the body of God. I just want to be where you are. Even your songs should be prophecies. Don't just sing songs because you love them. Have you heard songs of people from Christ's embassy? Have you heard them? They prophesy what they want to see. I know who I am. What do you think the person is saying? He's prophesying. He's prophesying. We are a chosen generation called for to show His excellence. So the person's life is an effulgence of the excellent spirit of God. We are called to show forth His excellence. Ah! Don't just sing. See, my brother, this realm, eh, everything you have is an arsenal. All I require for life, God has given me. That person is not begging for bread. I know who I am. I am who God says I am. Listen, not what the circumstance says. So I can be sick, but God says you are healed. That is what I am. See, go on, relax. Let's pray. Let's pray. If I enter, I will enter another doctrine. <laughs> this is not psyching yourself. This is standing on the revelation of God's word. I'm walking in power. I'm walking miracles. It's not I'm walking in miracles. I'm walking miracles. So the team may not walk. I come, I say, walk. Walk. My sisters were 34, 32. They were not married. Revelation hit me. I came home. I say, I'm the priest over this house. You are commissioned to marry. In six months, three people got married. 34, 2, 33. 2, 32. It's revelation. We're there praying, trusting God to bring suitors. No. God doesn't bring suit up. I command you to marry. That's how God works. It's a realm of the divine. I'm walking miracles. I live a life of favor. That's why good pursues me. It overtakes me. <laughs> I know who I am. <laughs> Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. Do you know what she's saying? Prophesying. Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. You don't know what she's saying. You, you are singing. You don't even follow. <laughs> Maracas was over in a house. Go and check the people that did exploits. Check how they spoke. None of them ever spoke fear. When you speak negation, you activate a spiritual energy that demons ride on. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. 
just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.